pieced together. There were protesters in a line against police officers who were in a line. Um, you know, some little bits of things were being thrown, a lot of uh, sort of yelling going back and forth. Well, you don't know, I'm, I shouldn't say yelling going back and forth. The police weren't yelling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some protesters. In, in, in a couple of cases, I saw some police smirking, which probably uh, doesn't help. But, um, you know, I just I saw a lot of people who were very upset. Uh, I guess it's over this uh, this this guy that was killed. Um, Freddie Gray yeah, died Freddie Gray. while in police custody. And these things are sweeping the country. It's uh, <laughs> there's no shortage of unarmed black men that are getting killed, and I think that that's uh, upsetting a lot of folks. And so something's got to change or these things are going to continue, I guess is what I saw. These protesters then began to destroy cars that did not appear to be police cars. How many people were destroying cars? Dozens. How many cops were nearby? Several. So they were far outnumbered is what you're saying, the police? Uh, I think that they could see it as though they were far outnumbered, mm-hmm. but I, I would say that it is your obligation as a law enforcement officer to, you know, stop uh, – stop people from com- committing crimes. This well, like a you and I day. both know that there is no obligation for the police to stop people from committing crimes. It's just what people like to think about the police. I mean, the police like to represent themselves as though they have some sort of duty to protect you, but we discussed this briefly last night, that there is no obligation for the police to provide you with any protection service whatsoever. Not only that, there's no obligation for any government agency to provide you with any service at all. And the Supreme Court has made that clear. And videos like this make it crystal clear. Because if you thought for a moment that the police were going to come to your aid in the moment where there's a band of marauders attacking your vehicle, and they could have attacked other things, who knows, broken some storefront windows, I'm sure that happened. I saw a still frame of somebody chucking a chair at a storefront window. I imagine that it went through it. Um, But again, it was just a photo. And they will do whatever they want to do, the police. And then in this case, they stood by and did nothing. Same thing happened uh, right here in Keene, New Hampshire, where there was a a massive bottle fight going on between some teenagers, uh, college students, in the streets during Pumpkin Fest. There were some riots that were going on, and uh, one uh, one portion of those riots included a 10 to 15 minute long bottle throwing uh, occasion. Exchange? Yeah. And, you know, this is an incredibly dangerous thing to do. Uh, throwing bottles, apparently. I'll give you that. That's happening in Baltimore as well. I was reading one article where uh, one guy said that a, a bottle or a beer can or something like that, or a can full of beer, rather, uh, sailed about six inches in front of his brother's face. Wow. Uh, I mean, you get, if one of those connects with somebody in the head, that could be a serious, uh, not just concussion, but, you know, could lead to a serious injury I beyond think it's, that. It's serious, yeah. I'm not saying con- concussions aren't serious, but it could be very, very bad. And the police stood by during that in uh, here in Keene. You know, they could have done something had they wanted to. They have helmets and things like that. Certainly the police were better prepared than any of the people who were in the bottle throwing incident. You know, they have shields and helmets, the police do. They could have done something, but instead they chose to what they called, uh, I think the the terminology contain. that one officer used was to contain it. So to hell with all the private property owners and the innocent people who are uh, who are on that street who could have been hit by one of those flying beer bottles. Uh, the police have no obligation to protect you. You cannot sue them for some kind of dereliction of duty if they don't do these things. So they just stood by there in Baltimore and watched as people's cars were destroyed. People whose cars, by the way, had absolutely nothing to do with the death of Freddie Gray, which is what all of this is, you know, has been sparked by. At least this that's the incident that sparked us. Obviously, it's been a lot that has led up to this. This isn't the, the first time somebody has died mysteriously in police custody. And I can talk more about the Freddie, uh, Freddie Gray situation. I've got an article by The Atlantic about it. Well, I'd like to address the idea of the police not uh, you know, doing something in this circumstance. I can totally see why someone would choose not to engage when this kind of thing's going on. But, I, you know, like, what it... Sure, I can understand why someone who was not a paid professional would choose not to engage. There's right. no obligation for those people, but you would expect a paid professional would, you know, do something. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I'm not uh, – like, the, the thing that I point out here is is that the police will take people to jail for this if they're not outnumbered. Like, this gives a 
peek into the mind mm. of law enforcement as it is used here in the United States, and that is is that we'll enforce the laws as long as it looks safe for us to do so. Now, I'm not saying that I I would not I would not step into this situation and attempt to stop these people from doing it. Maybe I would uh, you know talk them talk them down, but uh, I wouldn't try to stop them from from doing this physically because I think that you could have a much larger altercation on your hands. But you know, I mean, this is really just about numbers. Mm-hmm. This, it all comes down to numbers. Well, I understand what you're saying there, Mark, but if you pay someone for protection services, and people are paying the police for supposed protection services, people, well, they're paying and they believe they're receiving protection services, and then you find out that the police stand by as a gang of people are destroying things and they do nothing about it, I'm sorry, but that's unacceptable to me. If I were hiring you, Mark, as a protection agent, and you did absolutely zero when my property was being destroyed in front of you, then I would cancel your contract after that, and presumably you would also have some sort of insurance provision that would, uh, you know, indemnify uh, me from, you know, the damage that was caused because of your failure. That's uh, probably true. Or that would, uh, I don't know if indemnify is the right word. Right if you word, hired but- a security company to protect your property, and people came up and, you know, that outnumbered that security company, yeah. the, the the guards they had on hand, and people destroyed your car, I would think that you or your insurance company would hold that security company to be uh, at fault because uh, they didn't protect the property. I would think you would have a, I would think you'd have standing in that case, uh, that you would have standing to sue that company. So I you know, this is again more crystal clear proof the police have no obligation to protect you. And uh, and it is certainly true that numbers do make a difference, right? So oh, yeah. I support peaceful action. I support peaceful civil disobedience, uh, peaceful non-cooperation. I do not support violence in the streets. And I share a lot of these protesters' concerns with police abuse. I totally understand the frustration that people have over how the police behave. And I'm making very general statements, right? Obviously, some cops are better than others. There's no doubt about that. Sure. Uh, But you don't exactly have all the supposed good cops bringing these bad cops to justice. We're not seeing that happen. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. We got uh, more from Baltimore and details about what's happening in the streets and what is it that sparked all this? Who is Freddie Gray and what is it that happened to him? Uh, We'll uh, share all of that with you because we haven't covered this yet. This Freddie Gray story has been developing for about a week now. It was on the 19th that he uh, perished in police custody. Let's go, Steve, uh, listening in Atlantic City to WPG. Hello, Steve. Hi. I'm, I'm real sorry that the guy perished in police custody. I think that they should do an investigation and find out what really happened and then go from there. This civil disobedience throughout the country, I think, is being used to try to disarm the police um, just to clarify um, something, violence in the streets is not civil disobedience. There's nothing civil about it. Okay, well, violence in the streets then. We'll, we'll use that term. Okay, violence okay. in the streets is causing um, – what it will do is it will eventually disarm the police, and the police will stand around and not be able to do anything because they won't be able to take their weapons How out is the violence officers. in the streets disarming the police? I must have missed that well, connection. They'll, they'll write – They'll write like just they'll write rules where the police aren't allowed to do things. Oh, that's that seems pretty be, ridiculous that the police would be disarmed be, in the United well, States. I mean, I'd like to see it personally, happen. but uh, I, I'd like to uh, see the police carrying well, around a single bullet or something like that, like the old Barney Fife well, uh, well, the, thing. The point, well, the point is, it shouldn't be going out throughout the country. Um, I think what should happen is that they should do the investigation and go from there. All right, Steve, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Imagine a lot of these people don't trust the people that are going to be investigated. Yeah, Because a lot of these investigations in the past have been, well, one-sided. Yeah, unfortunately, the police, when they investigate themselves, tend to find that they've been everything. We've investigated ourselves and found that we've done nothing wrong. 855-450-FREE. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. 
the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free on this Sunday edition of the program. We're live, by the way, 855 450 free, unless we're not. And what I mean by that is some of our radio affiliates will delay broadcast the show. So our live hours are 7 to 10 at night Eastern time. You can always join us on the phones anytime, whether we're live on the radio where you are or not, or you're listening via podcast. You can always join the show here at 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well at Skype username lrn.fm. We're going to go back to your phone calls. And then at some point, I want to talk more about who is Freddie Gray. This is the most recent person who uh, people are upset about right now, protests going on in the streets of Baltimore, apparently while, uh, as we're speaking, they are continuing. So uh, who is Freddie Gray? Why did he die in police custody? There are a lot of questions surrounding this incident that happened about a week ago. And I finally, you know, I'd seen the headlines and I just hadn't looked at it yet. There's just so many of these things happening that, uh, you know, it's like, well, what do you... I, I don't, you know, is it news at this point? Uh, you know, Free Talk Live, we tend to bring up just a few topics. So, yeah. 
Well, right, and and there's and there's plus no you shortage don't know, of police abuse. You, like with the uh, the first guy in uh, in Ferguson, I'm his Brown, Michael Brown. Yeah, that's right. You know, in that circumstance, I didn't want to get. You know, we didn't know what was going on. It looks like the guy robbed a store before it occurred. And there's I, a good chance of that. You know, in this case, in Freddie Gray's case, there's no evidence he did anything at all except for run from the police, even though there was no warrant uh, in his case. But we can talk more running about running from this. the police. Not a good idea. Generally, no, it's not. But uh, it shouldn't result in you being beaten to death by the the police or whatever it is that happened behind closed doors uh, that there's no footage of. So uh, that's a basic level of understanding there, but we'll delve into it in more detail here in a moment. ExpressCoin.com is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, they've got some others, I believe. You go to uh, ExpressCoin.com, you can download their app for your smartphone, but you don't need to use an app. You can just use their website, ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. Plus, it's very affordable in that I've not seen a better rate for purchasing uh, Bitcoin online. ExpressCoin.com has it, and uh, you can actually do it with money order or check. They've got lots of Bitcoin waiting Bit for you. Yeah, Bitcoin's at uh, some of its lowest price in uh, some time. What, 220 so. or 217 today or something yeah, like that? Yeah, thereabouts. Right? So it might be. Now might be the time to pick it up. I don't know. I'm not making a claim one way or the other. Yeah, you never know. I mean, it could go down. It could go up. Uh, but either way, if you're ready to get some Bitcoin, go to ExpressCoin.com and use co uh, coupon code FTL. You'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all. You want to talk about a good fee? Zero. If you use code FTL for less than $40 worth of a buy over at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you with cryptocurrency like Bitcoin at ExpressCoin.com. Let's go to the phones. To the fun, let's talk to Ralph in New Jersey, uh, listening, I believe, to yeah, WPG. Um, go ahead, Ralph. Good, uh, good day. Thank, thank you for taking my call, guys. Sure. Um, let me uh, follow to the logical conclusion what one of you said when you said, quote, uh, the police has no uh, com commitment or has no obligation to protect us. Now, That's right. can you two imagine a day in this America without the cop, without the police? Can a you do what in, in a day? Can Can you imagine a day in this in this country without the police? Yes, yes, I can. It's it would be a glorious, glorious day. The sun would be shining. Huh? Yeah, and you would be smoking marijuana and all of that. Right? Well, I already do uh, that, but uh, yeah, I would. Oh, oh, you did? No, oh, I've done that a bunch. Wonderful. I actually did that in front of the state house uh, last week, as a matter okay. of fact. All right. Now you, you know another thing I want to uh, talk about. What you know? What point was being made in the plundering, the looting, uh, the pillaging that we see happen after dark in Baltimore, Maryland? Yeah, you know, I mean, if if the whole idea of the protest and the march is to bring about justice, uh, that's looting, plundering. Uh, and, and pillaging a 7-Eleven can bring about justice for pretty great? Uh, no, absolutely not. I don't I'm support doing. that okay. at all. Maybe all right. I wasn't Thank crystal you. clear earlier. Thank you, Ralph, for the call tonight. If, if I wasn't clear earlier, I don't support violence. I don't support destruction of property. I don't think those are pro productive ways to get a message out. Now, uh, the gentleman asked what, you know, if you could imagine a day without police, and you sort of riffed on that for a second. Yeah, you I would really like to have gone on on you that. You really don't, didn't give him some idea of what that might look like. In, well, he just kept talking, so I didn't have a chance. Yeah. Um, Let's so do that now. Here on Free Talk Live, we propose a world in the future that has, uh, you know, that, that's voluntary, where people voluntarily enter into contracts as opposed to having things forced upon them. So in a world where there weren't police... One would assume if you want to get there as peacefully as possible, we would evolve to that. And that would allow that would mean allowing for the police to allow organizations to compete with them in the area of uh, security services. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing you'd have to do is you'd have to stop the police from arresting people for uh, you know crimes that have no victim. In the case of these crimes on the streets of Baltimore, victims when you <laughs> when you're mm -hmm. throwing a garbage can through the window of my car i consider myself to be a victim wow and so uh, garbage you know, can through the window yep that happened so that would mean that there would be some kind of security maybe security for the businesses um, that were on that street maybe there would be security and you know for a major business that was there nearby or whatever and those security agents would attempt to provide security in that circumstance so you would have police you would just have basically private market police it would be security agents or police that would be hired by other organizations to do stuff 
mall cops, as it were. Yeah. But And uh, they'd be liable for their actions, unlike the police of today, unlike the government police who have no responsibility whatsoever so, um, for what they do. You know, the, the fleeing felon rule, which uh, so many people in this country have been killed over— um, this, in this case of this, uh, this, this fella, it might be, might very well be that. We don't know. He was exactly. not uh, fleeing from any kind of felony. So this was just being beaten up afterwards. We don't know what happened okay. to him. So anyway, the fleeing felon rule would probably, you know, I mean, that's a common law rule, right? Like you're allowed to use violence against somebody who's committed a felony against you or somebody uh, against by, who. By you, you mean the police? Well, the police are I don't allowed. Think you can shoot a, a person in the back. You are wrong. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. They're, yeah, I mean, uh, yes, you're wrong. You can shoot a fleeing felon. Really? Uh, now, if you're, uh, you know, if, if somebody's Mark committed- is not an attorney, and his, uh, he is not giving legal advice. I do not give legal advice, but I'm telling you that I have yeah. seen news stories where two Mexican men were shot in the back while they ran away from burglarizing a house. Mm. The neighbor caught them and killed them both. Wow. Uh, on uh, on audio, that. I think it was audio um, with some with the news story. Yeah, it was audio from the nine one one call, and the news story was written around it. So anyway, um, yeah, the, the, you're allowed to do that. This is a common law idea, and security agents would be able to use deadly force when it was called for. Mm -hmm. Now, yep. I'm not certain that I think it's a great idea to go shooting people in the back that were taking television sets. I mean, it's a television set. It costs $500. Is sure. it worth shooting somebody in the back, back no. over? No, insurance I tend to think would not. cover that. And the same with a car that's being vandalized. But, I, you know, they may use other terms. Like, do I think that somebody who's smash, jumping up and down on top of a car deserves to be tasered? Yeah, taser him. Yeah, and the uh, whoever it is that's hiring these protection agents you're talking about, the ones that would exist in our future that we're envisioning here, uh, they would want to make sure if it was an insurance company, let's say, they would want to uh, make sure that if the there was a gang of people destroying one car, that they were stopped right then, so they didn't go on and destroy the other ten cars uh, that were in the in the row, you know, because that would be an incredible repair bill, and there's a financial interest to put a stop to that. Not to mention the fact that you don't want unhappy customers as well, and if you can avoid the damage being done in the first place, then they're going to do that. So the police that we're talking about, this, these private protection services, would have all the right incentives to do what it takes to actually protect their uh, customers and their property. The government police have none of those incentives or next to none. 855-450 free. Share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. So the news breaks. Hillary Clinton's running for president. My buddy Mark says to me, hey, didn't Hillary support the Brady Bill and the assault weapons ban? And I'm thinking, yeah, 1992 presidential campaign. Oh my God. A gun grabber in the White House. So at guns80.com they've come up with the Hillary Clinton special. They just call it the Hillary. You even get two 30-round magazines for free, and it's only $474.95 for the whole kit. So get your AR-15 kit and tell Hillary, ha-ha, 844-2-GUNS-80, that's guns80.com. Attention, do you owe money to the IRS or have years of unfiled returns? Are you being audited or receiving threatening letters? If the answer is yes, you need help. The IRS can seize your property and assets, impose fines and penalties, garnish your wages, and even go after your bank account. Don't take on the IRS by yourself. Don't let the IRS destroy your life. Take action now. Call our team of experts for a free and confidential initial evaluation. We've helped thousands resolve their tax problems. Let us help you. 800-261-7073. 800-261-7073. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? 
Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition of the program. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind, although right now the police are back on the table for discussion given that there are now protests going on in the streets of Baltimore, Maryland, uh, where lots of destruction is apparently happening. Uh, people's cars being destroyed. Not the police. I mean, maybe some police, but I haven't I haven't seen that yet personally. Mark, yeah, their cars were being destroyed. Okay, but it was also average people's car cars. Yes, as they well, were all right? sort of lined up together. So uh, innocent victims of the protesters who are upset for a good reason. I mean, I can empathize with the protesters and their frustration. I'm certainly a critic of police abuse myself, but violence, of course, is not the solution. Lowering yourself to the level of the police by destroying property and, and you know, nobody's life has been taken by the protesters, but plenty of property has been destroyed, storefront windows, etc. It's certainly not teaching anyone a lesson. Um yeah. Right. Like, you know, the piece, the police didn't say, oh, well, I guess we shouldn't just go ahead and uh, abuse violence against uh, somebody who has just run away from us. So we shouldn't beat him up in the back of a car or something like that. So we'll tell you more about what's happening in Baltimore. Who's Freddie Gray, the person who recently died in police custody there? And that sort of sparked this recent incident. Uh, these t protests that are going on, as I understand it, as we speak, I've yet to find a live stream of it, but I haven't been looking too hard. Uh, Toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. What these uh, protesters should do is go home and enjoy a nice cab uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Because that, uh, really, um, they can get a really great deal at chwine.com. If you go to chwine and you take a look around, you're going to find wines that have been purchased from the major vineyards in Napa Valley and around the world. But these are overages. This is overstock. And it's bottled up in bottles, so you don't know what which winery it came from. You just know that these are high-end wines. 90 points and above for these wines. That's, uh, you know, that's high-end wine. They'd be $100 a bottle generally, uh, $70 to $100. But here they're priced at just $15 to $30. And I'm going to give you a coupon code that will take those tremendous savings and give you even more of a savings. So these bottles of wine, high-end wines, $15 to $30 at chwine.com. You use coupon code FTL, 
and you'll get 20% off of select bottles and free shipping. You know when something's liquid, free shipping really makes a big difference. You got to get three bottles, but that's the way it's set up to be sh shipped. Um, you know, they got the good, good packing material for three bottles, and it really works out. chwine.com, you go there, you click on the microphone that's in the upper left-hand corner, you enter FTL when the little box comes up, and then you'll be good to go. You'll get the 20% off um, and the free shipping. chwine.com, FTL. All right, toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Let's go to the phones and your thoughts. Gardner is in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Gard. Hey, Ian. How are you? Hey, it's, uh, it's I expected. Gardner Goldsmith from Liberty Conspiracy. Welcome, sir. It's good to hear you guys, and I'm really glad that both you and Mark brought this up uh, as a part of the conversation tonight, um, and also that you're exploring other avenues that don't pit uh, neighbor against neighbor through the tax system and uh, force people to pay for a police system that uh, either abuses people it takes into custody or doesn't protect people's property. And, you know, uh, Ralph earlier uh, asked a question that I really appreciated you guys exploring, which was imagine a day without the police. And um, as, as you pointed out early on and you both discussed, uh, there have been court cases that have already stood uh, in the Supreme Court. Uh, there was a Gonzalez case, and then there was Warren v. District of Columbia, where the That's courts right. of the government have both they've ruled that the police have no obligation to protect you or your property. And so we're operating under a system where the police aren't supposed to be necessarily protecting you. So if we imagine a day without the police, in fact, what we have most of the time are days without the police. That's most right. Yeah, most people know that crimes are not stopped by police. They arrive after the fact and try to investigate. So it's not like they're there to stop the bad guys. The only thing that someone can wish that they're doing is possibly acting as some sort of a deterrent. you know dissuasion or deterrent yeah. exactly and for especially for violent crimes that is not the case most of the violent crimes that occur are, occur because people lash out and this is something that i think if we were to look at a day without the police we could look at private businesses that as you said could be hired and they would be liable not only if they mistreated people, but if they didn't protect people. So imagine That's Baltimore. Correct. Yeah, the, if you had private police protection agencies in Baltimore, if they didn't protect that property, they would have to have insurance companies, and they'd have to pay those people for the destruction that happened to their businesses. This is not something that's going to happen in most instances where the police of a government don't do their jobs and protect people. Yeah, I think that um, when we, yeah, w yeah, I agree completely, uh, Gardner. When we talk about a day without the police, what is important to point out is, is I'm not talking about if the police disappeared tomorrow. I think if right. there was a news bulletin that went out on, uh, you know, all the radio stations and television stations and Facebook and however people consume their media that says police are not going to be doing anything tomorrow or, you know, any day in the future, that you would have a pretty chaotic tomorrow, right? Like people are used to this and that you know you? i don't know man because uh i mean I, I always go back to the hurricane katrina example where things didn't get chaotic until the average folks were told to leave it's the middle class average folks who are running businesses yep. and who are out there in the streets uh and not just middle class but poor poor people as well just good people who are just out there living their lives, who are willing to defend themselves and their neighbor and their property and their neighbor's property because it's the right thing to do. That's right. what keeps people in line. If I thought there were going to be riots, if for instance, if I thought there were going to be riots, I'd be at my business attempting to protect my business. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd be at my home attempting to protect my home. Do, which one could I do? I don't know. Uh, but uh, you know, maybe i get my brother to uh, protect my business <laughs> or whatever the uh, the situation is to where I had to You know, it's, it's interesting, guys, because... Uh, you brought up the Katrina example. There you have a place where, um, because of the artificial belief that people are going to be protected by the police, uh, and, you know, in many cases, the police do try to help people out. You know, the cops are trying to do their job. They're trying to do a good thing. But the cops can't be everywhere. So statistically, yeah. it's just not possible for them to protect everybody. But it's interesting because people have this artificial belief that the cops will protect them. So even in the Katrina area, you saw these people rise up, try to help each other out, try to protect each other, try to protect their property. And imagine if they had already established that the police weren't, if, if, if the belief weren't there, 
amongst those people that the police were going to protect them, there would have been even more people, population-wise, who would have been ready to try to help out and would have been armed. And uh, obviously, um, we're not going so far as to imagine a world where they would have already hired private police agencies. But if they, if if more people were aware that the police aren't there to help them and they have to help themselves, then then the folks in Katrina would have been even better prepared. I think. I think so, but the problem was they left, and so what you ended up having was essentially all cops and criminals. Or do I repeat myself? Uh, because what you know what happened there was if it's true that the police lead to security, if it's true that the police are a deterrent, well, Katrina had more, co- or the uh, you know New Orleans area had more cops in it at that time than it ever had because yeah. of you know the situation that that had developed. They brought in California Highway Patrolmen. Uh, out there to uh, to assist. I mean, they had cops from all over the place in this yeah, situation. Yeah. So if it were true, then that should have been the safest place to be. But in point of fact, it was one of the most dangerous uh, because there was all kinds of property crime uh, and I'm sure likely other violent crime happening uh, there. And the police weren't able to stop it despite the fact that there were far more of them than normal. So I think that's crystal clear evidence that it's not in point of fact the police that keep people safe. It's you and I, it's average folks who are keeping their their fellow man safe. Yeah, this is a great topic. I'm really glad you guys brought it up, and you know, I'll let you get to, to more callers and so on. But uh, I'm very, very pleased you did, because I think a lot of people uh, look at this, and they only look at the surface. How could it have been managed? What's wrong on the details? And obviously, a man died under very mysterious circumstances in Baltimore. And um, one of the reasons I didn't comment about what was happening in, uh, in Ferguson was because I didn't know what what had happened to uh, to Mr. Brown. But afterwards, people's protests seem to be justified. But now they're engaging in violence against innocent people. All right. Thanks, Guard, for the call tonight. Your show, thanks. by the way, Liberty Conspiracy. Go check it out at libertyconspiracy.com. It's a great show, and it's also on lrn.fm. Thank you, Gardner Goldsmith. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. What are your thoughts? When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose-to-nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription-strength medicine available over-the-counter. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Hi, Chuck Woolery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I've found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. Doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar. If you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back because this stuff works. Australian Dream is available at Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Walmart, Target, and other drug stores and supermarkets everywhere. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 877-345-7645. That's 877 877- 345-7645. When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately at 1-877-345-7645. That's 1-877-345-7645. one 345 7645 Free Talk Live. I cannot imagine anyone ever calling a cigarette interdiction hotline. <laughs> That'd be great. What would that conversation be like? <laughs> well, I'm calling because I can't stop smoking. Sir, do you have a cigarette right now? <laughs> well, yes. Is it lit? Uh-huh. Okay, you have an ashtray? Yes. Okay, you know when you're done with your cigarette and you put it out? Uh-huh. Okay, try that right now. <laughs> w- but it's not. Go ahead and do that same motion. I can't I can imagine the conversations. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell could they Is it 24 <laughs> hours? <laughs> I so, just don't get just it. someone call up. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> it's dumb. I, I smoked the whole pack of cigarettes. 
<laughs> I only get motivated at 3 a.m. Help me out. I've There's sm- nobody there. <laughs> I've smoked all my money away, and now my wife's left me, and she took the dog and the kids. I got no money left. I've smoked it all. I was breaking into my neighbor's houses and pawning their TVs oh, for I more this- cigarettes. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. back with more free talk live you can dial in toll free here at 855-450-FREE that's 855-450-3733 join us online drop by freetalklive.com the baltimore protests apparently going on yesterday i'm not sure how much of it's happening right now i've been saying it's been going on now but i've seen i've seen stories about it but i've yet to find a live feed if you've got one and you can share it with us uh, please do drop it onto our uh, facebook group or our facebook uh, page or submit it actually to the front page of freetalklive.com you can share your thoughts with us especially if you're in baltimore our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE the story posted by wbal today and updated this evening suggests that it was still going on thousands of protesters took to the streets uh, on saturday in the largest freddie gray rally yet And after hours of peaceful demonstrations, pockets of protesters smashed out police car windows and storefronts. Officials said 31 adults and four juveniles were arrested and six police officers were hurt after several storefronts were vandalized and other properties were damaged in the waning hours of the Freddie Gray demonstrations. I certainly don't want to see those police officers getting hurt. Groups outside of, uh, I don't want to see anybody getting hurt. Groups, out, uh, groups of outside agitators led to small pockets of protesters engaged in criminal activity, said police in a statement on Sunday. That's today. The Baltimore Police Department believes that outside agitators continue to be the instigators behind I, acts I, of violence and destruction. I did see what I consider to be white people in sort of the black flag, uh, of the uh, the black block uh, outfits, mm-hmm. you know, black hoodies with black uh, bandanas over their face and that kind of thing. But, I mean, people see that on TV. That doesn't mean they, they flew them in from Europe to, uh, to riot or anything like that. I have no idea. Well, I did see something elsewhere suggesting that uh, a lot of the people who are participating in the violence are actually not from the area, that there are people who, you know, they see this as a chance to destroy some stuff or uh, get into it with the police and they're showing up. Yeah. Uh, The problem happened near Camden Yards, where the Baltimore Orioles game was scheduled against the Boston Red Sox. It went on as scheduled. Only fans were told toward the end of the game to stay in the stadium because of public safety worries. Before the game, demonstrators fought with fans at a bar. Gray died April 19th after suffering a fatal spinal injury when in police custody. Authorities have not explained how or when Gray's spine was injured, and police have said Gray should have received medical attention at the spot where he was arrested before he was put inside a police transport van, handcuffed and without a seatbelt, a violation of the department's policy. In her first public comments since Gray's death, twin sister Frederica appealed for calm as she appeared with the mayor at a news conference saying, quote, my family wants to say, can you all please, please stop the violence? Freddie Gray would not want this. Freddie's father and mother did not uh, did not want uh, anyone. Violence does not get justice. She kind of trailed off and then said violence yeah. does not get justice. 
There have been nearly uh, near daily protests since Gray's death on Saturday. A small group threw cans and plastic bottles in the direction of police officers. One protester broke out the window of a police cruiser, grabbed a police hat inside, and wore it while standing on top of the cruiser <laughs> with several other protesters. Great, a comedian. At that point, scores of officers rushed into the area, stopped and formed a line three officers deep. The protesters scattered but returned a few minutes later and began yelling, What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Blow up police cars. From inside the stadium, fans watched the protesters gather before the protest turned tense and violent. Demonstrators filled two city blocks and marched two miles to City Hall, where the crowd overtook the grassy plaza adjacent from the building. Tanya Preacher, 36... Uh, A 36-year-old Baltimore resident said she'd never attended a protest in the city before, but watching a video of Gray's arrest motivated her. She said, I looked at my my son and thought, that's my son. Residents young and old from Baltimore and beyond voiced their anger at how the department and the city's officials are handling the investigation into Gray's death. At one point, the crowd paused for a moment of silence in front of shock trauma, the hospital where Gray died. The marchers then migrated to Camden Yards. At a downtown intersection, a dozen marchers laid down in the street during an impromptu (laughs) die-in, wearing a sign around his neck that said, I am Freddie Gray, 33-year-old Dante Acree, joined thousands of others outside of City Hall. Cree said he came out to the protest because, quote, it could have been one of my kids. It could have been my brother, my father, he said. I'd want the same support. Leonard Patterson, because most of these protesters are peaceful people. It's just there are certain outliers who are using this as an excuse to destroy things. And, you know, video is, is it's more exciting to get the pictures of somebody throwing, uh, you know, garbage cans through business windows than it is to get just people who are doing a regular protest. Those aren't nearly as exciting. Leonard Patterson, age 56, said he drove from Manassas, Virginia to be part of the protest. He said that he decided to come after thinking about his college-age daughter. Quote, I'm trying to do everything in my limbs, everything in my power, to make this a better world for her. He said, holding up his black and white drawing of Freddie Gray. The drawing shows Gray being hoisted from a police van to heaven by two angels. He says, I'm here to do what I can Police brutality is as old as the 1950s, the 1960s. It's still here. It's he really said. older than that. Um, I mean, you know, the king's men. Well, he's 56, as- so you know, this is his lifetime. Sure. I'm just saying that uh, honestly, those in power, those uh, the petty tyrants, the the, the king's men, as I called them uh, just a moment ago, mm-hmm. they have always been ones you can't particularly trust when it comes to power. And I don't frankly think that the uh, the, the people above them can be trusted either. There's science that proves studies, I should say, um, you know, I think that that qualifies as soft science. Science that proves that uh, you know power corrupts. Like it's not just oh, a yeah. saying. It really does corrupt. And here, on top of that, power corrupt uh, attracts the corruptible, those that wish to be corrupted. Now, it's, uh, that's not to say that every police officer out there, I don't believe it for a second, um, every police officer out there is wanting to be corrupted. But it does show in studies that even people that would be considered the most morally upright when given power get a little shifty with their decision-making. They think, well, you know, uh, for the better good, I should make this decision that wouldn't otherwise... You know, Transparency is probably the best bet against these sorts of things. Let's talk to John. He's in Ocean City, New Jersey. John, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, what's happening? Hey. You know, there is justifiable paranoia and a justifiable anger against those men that wear badges that are lawless. I know that. But they say when, when the law breaks the law, there is no law. There's a struggle for survival. That sounds a lot like anarchy. And that the thing that worries me... That's what that we're seeing. With the, yeah, whether well, Ferguson... You know, uh, I, I, I have sympathy for the fellow up in New York that was selling cigarettes that died. That was yep. that was a tragic death and disgusting. Ferguson, that guy was a thug, and he, he attacked the cop, and I don't want to go into that, but... Uh, you but know, we don't that, know that if that he scene. attacked the cop. I mean, nobody really knows what, what happened in that situation. I, I'm well, not going to uh, disagree with you necessarily. He certainly attacked a store owner, um, you know, before that. But we don't really have, uh, the, the, you know, it's not concrete what happened, and that's really one of the problems. We don't have video of what has occurred. Right. We don't know for sure, but the one thing we do know for sure is that Big Brother did show up with armored uh, vehicles and snipers and so forth. And the thing that worries me is there's that socialist fascist elite, that that so-called puppet master elite that. They want to have anarchy so that they can 
clamp martial law down on all of us and you know and a, you know take away our constitutional rights and our civil rights that's what worries me and the whole thing yeah. is not to lose your head you know but uh, there's good cops and bad cops there's definitely bad cops man but there's also good cops why aren't the good cops definitely... arresting the bad cops you know that's a good question now look at serpico man they uh they, 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 you know, you're usually <laughs> you're usually up against people that you know <laughs> will set you up. To, Dangerous right. people. You know, I mean, the cops are afraid. It, Let's it, right. I think you're absolutely right. If there are good cops, they're hiding from the bad cops. They don't want to be the ones to make those arrests because they figure they're going to get targeted by the other bad cops because there's no shortage of bad cops, right? Well, yeah, that's true too. But the whole thing is, is that there are you know lawless men. That wear badges, and there's lawless men that don't wear badges. Do you have violent sure. people that are going to, you know, commit crimes against the regular folk? And then you do, so you do need police. But uh, yes, there are people that uh, that hide behind that that are actually bad. No that doubt. That goes back. To, I mean, I saw documentaries about New York City cops that were corrupt back in the 19th century. So it's nothing new. Oh yeah, right, absolutely. Thanks. John, thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. So, yeah, I'm not really clear on what if uh, – I'm sure something is happening in Baltimore today, but uh, I think the bulk of the, the protests was going on yesterday, so I kind of got a uh, misunderstanding. There was a post over on the uh, cop block – one of the cop block groups on Facebook asking if there was a live stream happening in Baltimore, which suggested that things are still happening there uh, today of a protesty kind of nature, possible destructive nature. So curious to know what's actually happening, if anything, on the ground right now. But what happened yesterday – was pretty awful, and we'll continue here in a moment. I want to look into who Freddie Gray is. What was it that precipitated all this? Because the streets have exploded with protests and uh, destruction of property. What happened with this man who died in police sure, custody? It was important as far as Mark Michael Brown went, right? Yeah, the toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. We'll delve into that here in a moment. And, of course, you can bring up whatever you want. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Dara W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 26, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.74 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $219. 
Antiwar.com reports, despite President Obama's outspoken praise for the intelligence community in the wake of revealing a pair of Western hostages were killed in January, the drone war, which has become a centerpiece of his foreign policy, is often carried out in an intense fog. There have been occasional inquiries in the past about signature strikes, the administration's policy of carrying out strikes on totally unidentified people they think might be acting in a way that a terrorist would act. All this language really means, however, and it's something that's becoming increasingly apparent is that when President Obama signs off on a strike and some CIA agent pushes a button, the U.S. often has no real idea who they're about to kill. The January hostage killings reveal this in more ways than one. As the U.S. struck what it figured was an Al-Qaeda compound, which is the official way of saying they blew up a house, they had no idea who was inside except that there might be Al-Qaeda. That's the U.S. drone war. A lot of people are killed, only a handful are ever identified at all, and when the U.S. does happen to kill some real Al-Qaeda leader, they seem as surprised as anybody because they sure didn't know they were aiming at him. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports a pair of convicted drug smugglers scheduled to be executed in Indonesia have received official notice from the government that they will face a firing squad imminently, possibly as soon as three days. Australian nationals Myanmar Sukumaran and Andrew Chan reportedly received their execution notices Saturday and were informed by their attorneys. Earlier this year, Indonesia drew international criticism when it resumed capital punishment and in response instituted a new procedure to notify the condemned at least 72 hours before they are executed. Drug trafficking is one of three crimes in Indonesia that earns the death penalty along with terrorism and murder. When given his 72-hour execution notice, Sukumaran created three new self-portrait paintings in his prison cell, one titled 72 Hours Just Started. Although there has been no official word exactly what date and time the convict's execution will occur, Australia Foreign Minister Julie Bishop said they would be scheduled imminently. She also said that her government would continue to seek clemency for the men from Indonesia's president. Indonesian officials said that while Sukumaran and Chan may be executed in three days at the earliest, the government has the option of postponing their deaths if it so chooses. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Nepal urged countries to send aid to help it cope with the aftermath of a devastating earthquake that killed nearly 1,400 people, a toll predicted to rise as rescuers used their hands to dig for survivors among the rubble on Sunday. Thousands of people braved freezing temperatures and patchy rain to sleep on pavement, in parks, or in fields in the crowded Kathmandu Valley, too afraid to return to their homes damaged by a 7.9 magnitude quake, which struck at midday on Saturday. Information and broadcast Casting Minister Menendra Rijal said, We have launched a massive rescue and rehabilitation action plan and lots needs to be done. Our country is in a moment of crisis and we will require tremendous support and aid. Cell phone video shows climbers concerned about avalanches. Police said the death toll has reached 1,394 with about 4,700 injured. More than 630 people have been killed in the Kathmandu Valley and at least 300 more in the capital. Foreign climbers and their Nepalese guides around Mount Everest were caught by the tremors and a huge avalanche. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Did you know that 35% of high school girls report that they've only had sex with one or two partners a year instead of having the living shit f out of them by any guy they see? Did you know that only half of all 17-year-old males report f without a condom? even though it's really the only way to go. There are thousands of American teenagers today who are unaware of the full benefits of 
blowing your brains out all day, every day. These otherwise average high schoolers haven't been taught about f***ing every chance you get, pounding each other dry, and never ever pulling out. Every sexually active high school student should know this stuff. Ditch the condoms, because it's always better raw. Stop worrying about STDs. F*** every chance you get. Just keep f***ing and f***ing and f***ing. Strangers, doesn't matter who. And most importantly, be direct with your partner about how badly you want to f*** their brains out. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Apparently, in some places in the world, twerking is illegal. Really? Three women have been arrested and jailed in Russia for the act of twerking. Uh, we will explain more about that when we get the chance. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. But in the last hour, uh, Mark, you and I were talking about Baltimore and the riots, the uh, the unrest, the destruction of property that has been going on there over the last 24 hours. Not sure what the status of it is here today, but uh, there's still discussion about it happening online, so maybe there are protests still continuing. Whether or not they have become violent today is another question. It was last night that, or yesterday that in the, the late hours of a protest outside of the city hall, protesters at some point, some of them, became violent. They destroyed storefront windows, destroyed cars, not just of the police, but of average people, innocent people who, sure. you know, may have been their fellow protesters for all day. Uh, for that all sadly day. seems to be the M.O. in many of these protests is like, let's destroy stuff. And yeah. they don't really care what it is. And oftentimes it seems to be cover for theft. Um, it's not yeah. just vandalism, but theft uh, goes along, too. Yeah, there there have been some of that as well. Uh, some, you know, some looting has happened in Baltimore. Uh, so what is it that prefaced all this? What started this? I'd seen the headlines, but I hadn't taken the time to look into the case until I saw about the, uh, the, the violence that happened yesterday. Freddie Gray, he died on April 19th. So one week ago, uh, he perished. And his death leaves many unanswered questions. This from the Atlantic.com's David Graham. But it's clear that when Gray was arrested in West Baltimore on the morning of April 12th, that he was struggling to walk. By the time he arrived at the police station a half hour later, he was unable to breathe or talk, suffering from wounds that would kill him. Gray died on last Sunday from spinal injuries. Baltimore authorities say they're investigating how the 25-year-old was hurt, a somewhat perverse notion given that it was while he was in police custody and hidden from public view that he apparently suffered injury. Well, I would like to point out that it was an it was a police investigation that got the guy in South the police officer in South Carolina recently. Um, it wasn't some independent thing or um, really the, the this news. was the cop that shot the dude in the back as he was running yeah, away. Like we we heard about that story when the police officer was arrested, right? Yeah, well, it was, I mean, there didn't have to be that big of an investigation there. There was video footage of that one happening. I'd so just like had, to that point video, out- had that video not come out, I bet you that cop would still have his job and the police department would have said, oh, yeah, everything was by the book. Well, uh, yeah, I, t- I tend to think that that's the case, too, that usually when there's when there's no evidence to the contrary, the police are often given the benefit of the doubt. That's right. But when you're, you know, like maybe things are changing a little bit. No. No, not at all. What changed is that people now have video devices. What's changing is not the police themselves or the departments or their... Uh, their fairness or their willingness to investigate themselves. What's changing is that they're being forced to, in certain circumstances, investigate themselves. And essentially, by circumstance, by the fact that somebody happened to be there recording that man being shot in the back as he was, you know, no threat whatsoever to the officer, then that's what forced the police to take action. They got caught red handed. Or that officer got caught red handed and then the, you know, his buddies in the thin blue line, they couldn't possibly back him on that one. There was just no excuse for it. I mean, the dude planted a taser or planted a gun. I don't know. What was it that he planted? He planted something, uh, some kind of weapon. 
Yeah, he said dude. that the guy uh, took his taser, and Which that's was why nonsense. he shot him. Right. You can, he walks over and plants the taser on him crystal clear in, yeah, the, yeah. in the video. So, you know, there's a certain point at which you got them so good with the evidence that they have to do something that makes them look like they, you know, are doing the right thing. Thank goodness. But it's only because they were forced. Their hand was forced in that case. I would like to believe what you're saying, Mark, and that is that some sort of sea change or the tides are changing now with the, uh, the, with the police, but I don't believe it for a moment. I think that there's a lot of pressure at this point on police departments to even if like one of my concerns is is there's going to be a legit shoot a good a good shoot that comes out and the police officer is going to go down for it but look i i only this is only in the sense that i don't want a man to go to uh, you know jail for something he didn't do simply because there has to be somebody laid at the altar of justice, right? Like, there's been so many bad things that have happened so many times, especially in recent history, 1,400, uh, you know, killings in the United States by police, which it really, I mean, Western industrialized nations don't even come close. Canada's the closest, and there's a lot of complaints about police use of force in Canada, well, what are you suggesting, that at some point some cop is going to go down for shooting someone he didn't shoot? I think that there is a this this uh, this zeitgeist going on, this, this feeling that we have to have police put in jail for shooting people. And I agree, but at some point you do agree that there has been in the last 10 years one legitimate shoot uh, as far as police go, right? What do you mean? Do you think that in the last decade that some police officer was justified in killing somebody? Probably, yeah. Excellent. Now we're on the same page. So I don't want to see um, anybody who doesn't deserve to go to jail go to jail. And I think that things are turning right now, right? Like Michael I think Brown. You're totally wrong. Michael Brown got held up as some kind of hero when, by the looks of it, not so much. No. Right? Um, because, not because he was a hero, it's because the time has come for things to change in law yeah, enforcement the government's in America. not going to change. The government, the has government no is going to change. Not anytime soon. Change. They don't have any interest in doing that. They are going to keep things going status quo as long as they can, and they'll only punish their own if they get caught red-handed like they did in the case in South Carolina. I'm sorry, I totally disagree with where you're coming from on that. I wish I could agree with what you're saying, but... Uh, all the outrage has. There's been a you lot of outrage for a long time. You understand that they don't love the police, right? The government doesn't really care about their little paladins of, of of justice, right? They really don't care. Who's they? The 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 elected the politicians? officials, the politicians, and the bureaucrats who are above them, the pay grades above the police officers. They ultimately don't care about well, those I've people. I see no evidence for that. I mean, they uh, they back them up every chance they get. Here they in do Keene, back New them Hampshire. up every chance they get because currently and today the voters tend to believe the police officers, yeah. the respectables, as it were. When the respectables come to the conclusion that, dear God, this is a police state, the people who have uh, actually been pushed it forward the politicians and the uh, the the police brass mm -hmm. and the the bureaucrats those pe people won't face the punishment that's the point i'm trying to make you're saying who won't face the punishment the police brass or the, the politicians the police brass the politicians the bureaucrats yeah, why would they face punishment they're they not going to punish themselves i'm just pointing out that Things are changing, and people are going to try to hold the individual police officers as though this is just crime. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're, they're going to uh, they're going to hoist up a, an individual officer as though they're doing something to stop corruption or something. Indeed, like that. and but maybe the won't. officer will deserve it, and but, maybe they won't. Yeah, but they won't be stopping corruption because they'll just be making this one sacrifice to the public to make it seem like. They actually care about what people think, but I they think don't th care. I think they'll have uh, you know cams on the police officers, and so We're we'll have that. more evidence. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. We'll have more evidence, and but it's also a good thing for the police. And uh, and and I can understand there was an article recent, or I think a video. I didn't watch it, but I saw the headline over at copblock.org, talking about how be careful, you know, don't don't believe them. Essentially, with this whole police body cameras, yeah, don't be fooled into uh, a sense of complacency. And I agree with the general statement that you cannot rely on the police's body cams to be the only camera in a circumstance, in whatever scene we're talking about. I concur with you, that, sure. You can't allow the fact that they might have those cameras to make you complacent and make you you know, less likely to record the scene with your own camera. So I think that 
that having a police camera is not a bad thing, but it should not be the only thing because you still can't trust them. You can't trust that they're going to have the camera turned on. You can't trust that they're not going to lose the footage. But all that said, ultimately, I don't trust the government with cameras, but I, I you know, we what what choice do we have in this circumstance? I think that the oh, you can support or oppose the police cameras. That's your choice. Those are the choices, and I choose to support the police cameras. I, I do as well because I think that reporters will come to a conclusion that hey, uh, you know, when we don't get the video, that we think that something went wrong, and I hope that reporters do that. All right, there's more to come here. Who is Freddie Gray? What happened? A couple of weeks ago when he was arrested and then ultimately died on the 19th, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. We have Skype as well at Skype username LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Holy oh, crap. Yeah, right. Whoa. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. 
Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. Talking about the police and the protests that have been erupting in Baltimore. Uh, that was pretty bad last night, apparently, with uh, property being destroyed, cars being damaged. Not just police cars, by the way, but cars of average folks who didn't deserve it, who uh, did nothing to deserve, you know, being attacked. Storefront windows being destroyed. Stores being looted, it's happening again. And that's because there's yet another person who may have been injured by the police. Thing is, nobody really knows what happened to Freddie Gray. I've got more on the story here from theatlantic.com. But also, we want to get to your calls and thoughts. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. With you in studio tonight, you've got Ian and Mark. And if you're online, whether it's your smartphone, laptop, your desktop computer, or computer at work, If you're online at all, you need to protect yourself, and you can't count on your internet service provider to do it for you. In fact, they're probably one of the people or one of the groups out there who are trying to invade your privacy. They're probably logging all the websites you visit, saving your search terms that you're entering into Google or Yahoo or whatever it is that you use to search. They can save all that information because normally it's just done sort of out in the open, unencrypted. But once you get pro XPN, you will be encrypted and you'll be protected from prying and spying like that. Not just your uh, internet service provider, but maybe some criminal trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets for your passwords, your login information. Get their app from proxpn.com slash FTL. It's available for Windows, iOS, Android, Macintosh, even Linux. You get, uh, get it downloaded, get it connected. It only takes a moment. And then once you're connected, you are encrypted which means you cannot be sniffed out by those people who would like to know what you're doing online. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go there to get started. And when you're ready to upgrade, you can uh, use their premium package. Use code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of the annual account that breaks down to around 5 bucks a month. You get unlimited bandwidth with servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent. You can get past regionally blocked websites. And, of course, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. ProXPN.com slash FTL. I should point out that ProXPN protects you up to the point where they release your information to the rest of the Internet. So they're a virtual private network, which means that they protect you from having having people sniffing out your information on your end of things and at your ISP level. But once ProXPN releases whatever it is you're doing to the websites you're trying to visit, obviously they're going to have your info, right? So you still have to trust them uh, with that information. Well, if you log into your Facebook account yeah. uh, with Pro, through ProXPN, people are going to assume they know who it is, right? People are going to assume who knows who what is. Well, they, you know, if you're uh, posting on your Facebook ap- account, uh, people are going to Facebook's going to assume it's you. Right. The people on Facebook are going to assume it's you. It's you, right? Pro XPN is a good first step towards being more private online. It's one that I recommend uh, taking. Uh, but there are other things you need to do if you want total total privacy. So do keep that in mind. Pro XPN can help prevent you from uh, prevent people from knowing you know what you're surfing and looking at. That's uh, correct. It can also help prevent the websites you're visiting from knowing where you are as well. Yep. Uh, so proxpn.com slash FTL. Go try it out. It's free to download the software, see what you think about it, and then upgrade to the premium account with code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We have Frank listening in Arkansas. Frank, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, hello and good evening. Welcome, um, Frank. Go I, ahead. I was just uh, enjoying your program. And there's several facts that we do not know at this point about the uh, the apprehension and arrest of, I think it was Mr. Freddie Gray. That's correct. And uh, one of them is why did the police need to arrest him? And the other one um, is the, the amount of resistance and fight and struggling that he put up with that required four or five officers to pin him to the ground handcuff him and finally get him into the paddy wagon and my thought is um it could have been a justified arrest and if it was then he was a man that was lawless because he was not going to be taken 
and uh, they, the struggle, he actually contributed with his own demise and physical injury by putting up such a strong resistance. Well, there's no evidence there yet, some... like you said, as to why he was arrested. From what I've read so far, the uh, you know he looked at a cop and turned around and ran, but there's apparently no warrant out for him. Let so... me uh, let me get uh, this straight. Wasn't there video of him of you know the condition he was in before the you know like being put into the police car and then sort of he was in much worse condition coming out? Is that uh, that's my understanding? Of that's it. the story. Okay, so I mean, well, that sort of says that you know, hey, let's stop off and beat the hell out of this guy. That could very well suggest that, that they beat him in a well, place where they knew there would be no video cameras. The thing I, I wanted to mention is that sometimes they have to put a knee in his back or on his neck just to hold him down and get his arms in the handcuffs. And it, the injury could actually have happened when they were determined to arrest him and he was he bent, determined, you're, you're not going to take me. And also, this, this, sometimes this also is, is suicide by cop. Instead of using a gun, he's just going to twist and turn. And uh, I'm not saying that this is, a, this is plausible. I'm not yep. saying I know what happened. No, I think but you're right. All of that is plausible. It, yeah, well, I, I enjoy your program, and that, that was what I wanted to share. Thanks for sharing, Frank. Thank I appreciate you. your call tonight. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Yeah, I think that there are, you know, certain groups that are just sick and tired of giving the police the benefit of the doubt. That's what's happening here, is is that this is going to continue to happen, too. Uh, I mean, there's four, last year, 1,400 people were killed in the United States. Um, that was, let's see, there was more people killed in the month of March uh, than... I think in the entire tw- in the United States in the entire 20th century in Great Britain, so more people killed. Period by no, anyone by, or by, by police? police officers. Um, more people killed in the month of March, I believe, was the statistic that I read than like 1, the 1,400. 20- no, during the month of March. There were more people killed during the month of March than like the entire 20th century or something in Great Britain by police. Um, I have to you look at this. You did say 1,400. There though, were right? 1,400 people killed last year by police. Oh, last year. I the numbers that part. are okay. unglued. The, the, this is yeah. not, this, the, the, the government is not acting like a Western democracy. It is acting like a total, totalitarian regime. It is unbelievable. And I'm not saying that this, I don't know what happened in this kill. I have no idea. Maybe this was justifiable. Maybe it was. But there's a certain segment of the population, several certain certain segments, that are just sick and tired of giving the police the benefit of the doubt. Theatlantic.com says how it happened remains unknown. It's even difficult to understand why officers arrested Gray in the first place. But with protesters taking to the streets since Gray's death on Sunday, the incident falls into a line of highly publicized fatal encounters between black men and police. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, a reserve sheriff deputy in Tulsa, Oklahoma, pleaded not guilty to second-degree manslaughter charge in the death of a man that he shot. The deputy says the shooting happened while he was trying to tase the man. Black men dying at the hands of police is, of course, nothing new, but the nation is now paying attention and getting outraged. The authorities can't say if there was a particularly good reason why police arrested Gray. Normally, they come out with an excuse within 24 hours. Uh, This article I'm reading here was written three days after Gray's uh, death. And according to the city's statement, an officer made eye contact with Gray, and he took off running, so they pursued him. Mm. Though he'd had scrapes with the law before, there's no indication he was wanted at the time. And though he was found with a switchblade... all very weird. Uh, well, we'll come back with more here in moments. 855 450 freeze the number. Share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV 
Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590 get out of debt now 800-981-7590 Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. The we tonight includes me, Ian. And me, Mark. And we're going to get into more of your calls here about the uh, situation in Baltimore, which is a situation that we have all across the United States. It's just right now it is erupting in Baltimore in a violent, tumultuous manner that is resulting in the destruction of property by certain protesters who don't understand property rights, apparently, or don't care about it. And don't understand how, you know, destroying innocent people's property like business owners and car owners is going to do anything. Uh, You know, they think that somehow it's going to do something to stop the police abuse. Maybe they're just not thinking at all. I I don't know, but it's not going to help. Maybe that's not their goal. Yeah, it's not going to help. I don't think it's their goal. That's a good point. It could just be uh, troublemakers who want to destroy things. That's what it looks like to me. So uh, we're talking about the police abuse in the United States, but specifically what happened with Freddie Gray, the man who died on April 19th in Baltimore, West Baltimore, after being arrested for no particular reason, apparently. Police have yet to really give any kind of excuse as to why officers pursued Gray and ultimately took him into custody, wherein he then later died after being in their possession. 
So we'll continue with that discussion here in a moment. Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Check out the Pocket Power Plus. If you have anything at all that uses battery power, then the Pocket Power Plus can help you keep that device charged and up and running. In some cases, it can run your electronic devices for days if necessary. Uh, certainly, you'll be able to get through uh, probably a solid day or two with your uh, your cell phone and uh, and it's just an awesome uh, product. It's, in fact, a breakthrough in portable power technology, and it literally does fit in your pocket, hence the name Pocket Power Plus. And you can go and uh, grab one over at PocketPowerPlus9.com or you get it at half price. If you use coupon code FTL, you'll save even more on the Pocket Power Plus. And this thing delivers an enormous supply of on-demand power. It's not your average battery pack because at, in some circumstances, it can actually jumpstart a car. In fact, it even comes with the jumper cables that you'll need to do that, as well as an adapter set for you know all various different types of cell phone connectors and laptop size, you know, the DC jacks on the backs of your, uh, your laptop. So you probably get the connectors you need and uh, you get it all over at Pocket Power Plus. Uh, pocket power, excuse me, pocketpowerplus9.com. That's where you want to go to get the special deal. Pocketpowerplus9.com. And don't forget coupon code FTL as we go right back into your calls and thoughts. Again, nobody really knows yet at this point, and it's been more than a week now. It's been a week since he died, and it's been almost two since uh, since Mr. Gray here, uh, Freddie Gray, was taken into custody by the Baltimore police. According to the story... Uh, authorities say they can't say if there was a particularly good reason. He had had scrapes with the law before, but in this case, there was no warrant. He just started running when he saw the police, which shouldn't be illegal to go for a run if the police are, are in the area. But well, nonetheless, we know how police respond to that sort of thing. It's pretty, it's pretty sort of. Uh, I it's don't know, considered suspicious. But yeah, suspicious. I think that's the term I'm looking for. Damning. I think is too strong of a term. Um, it's pretty suspicious when you just see the police and run. Well, apparently he did have a switchblade on him at the time, but even the mayor of the city said that we know that having a knife is not necessarily a crime. The police say well, that a switchblade Greg- is a crime in I think 49 states. Okay, well, maybe the mayor doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Anyway, the police say Gray didn't resist arrest. They say he didn't resist arrest and that officers didn't use force, Mm. which seems to be mostly corroborated by the video shot by bystanders. Gray seems to shout in pain and his leg seems injured as officers drag him to the police van. Someone off camera shouts, his legs broke and y'all are dragging him like that. Gray also had asthma and requested his inhaler, but didn't get it. Yet it's not the leg or the asthma that killed him. Instead, it was a grave injury to his spinal cord. Mm. Gray's family said he was treated for three fractured vertebrae and a crushed voice box, the sort of injuries that doctors say are usually caused by serious car accidents. The van made at least two stops before reaching the police station, but there's no footage to say what happened during the journey, or at those stops. It's a baffling conundrum, writes The Atlantic. Deputy Police Commissioner Jerry Rodriguez said, quote, none of the officers describe any use of force. None of the officers described any against uh, Mr. Gray. Yeah, I really have a problem with the fact that, uh, for one, officers don't have body cameras on, or if they do have body cameras on, that we don't have footage of these stops. What happened when these when this van stopped and these police officers got out of the van? I'm sorry, I'm sick and tired of asking this question. What happened Look, in the back of the van? I used to be that guy that would defend the police in every opportunity because I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. Years on the air of seeing what appear to be abuses, what is uh, seeing good officers, people that I'm the people that I'm told are the good officers, ignoring the behavior of the bad officers right there on video. I want video. That's what I want from my public servants. Otherwise, I'm going to refuse to call them public servants. Mm. I'm going to call them what they are, the king's men. These are the masters, not the servants. They are petty tyrants until they can prove otherwise, as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk to Doug. He's in Chicago listening via TuneIn. Doug, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Yeah, hi. I don't know if you heard about the one here, uh, Rakia Boyd in Chicago, R-E-K-I-A-B-O-Y-D. No, I did not. You put it in, you put in Chicago. She had been killed by an uh, off-duty Chicago detective that um, 
evidently their group had been too loud and it ended up being a shouting match and he felt threatened and he began shooting right into the crowd and they had a bunch of people that were marching here they found him not guilty here can be the bottom line Mm. they've been given the benefit of the doubt way too often when you have a high threshold of authority and a very low threshold of accountability here can be what we have happen you have people that are running around that are negligent that are lying clearly lying I mean, Cook County Court, they've proven time after time, you know, that they they pull the cop in and the video will show one thing and the cop will lie and tell another, you know, uh, murder. You know, I mean, if you're a cop, in my opinion, even though there are a bunch of them out there that are good, you have no credibility by default. You you have no credibility. You know, how often do we watch a cop, you know, uh, driving regularly and they fail to put on their directional or they make a U-turn? You, I would be given a ticket for that. But then, you know, when you have that type of mentality for a prolonged period of time, then you begin taking it a little bit further. Well, I can beat the crap out of an individual and get away with it. I can maybe even go even further and put them near death and get away with it. Well, I can they tell you, it too. you have no I, accountability. I, I wouldn't doubt for a second working in law enforcement that there that you run into quite a few people that uh, that you feel need a butt beating, right? Like, I bet that happens on a relatively regular basis. And then when you don't have the accountability, at some point you're going to say, you know what, I'm going to administer that butt beating. And then after you've administered a few butt beatings to people who definitely deserve that butt beating, then you're going to start thinking, you know, it, it gets easier and easier to administrate the butt beating. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a fair man. I believe that Michael Brown had it, probably had it coming. He probably went after the gun and he probably charged the cop and the cop had been right to shoot him. However, when you look at, you know, I mean, we're getting them week after week now. It originally yep. had been, you know, maybe two or three a year. Now we're going up to like every no, week. No, no, you only week. heard about two or and, three a year. You're just hearing, they, they've been right. happening. You're just hearing about more of them now, thanks to the internet, right. thanks and, to and, viral video, things like that. Well, up to this point, up until look, 20- when you look, Let's go right When ahead. you look at like Eric Garner, when you look at Eric Garner, okay, NYPD, they have a rule. I mean, Mark, you're on the volunteer fire department. I worked on the fire department too. You have a book that you have to go by. You have a rule book that you follow. They have it in the NYPD rule book. You do not do a chokehold. What did the moron do? He did a chokehold and he got away with it. <laughs> yep. You know, he should have been charged. He should have been charged and he should have been convicted, you know, but. Doug, thanks for your call, man. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. AWs in Bozeman, Montana. A.W., you're on Free Talk hey. Live. Listen to KMMS. Yay. Hey, guys. Uh, you know, it's, as we break this down, and we, you know, because I was talking to a friend of mine here. He's from Montana, and uh, he doesn't know about bad neighborhoods and things like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was trying to explain to him, like, I, I was there for the L.A. riots. All right, and, hang on. Uh, I want you to tell hey, me more in a moment. Yeah. AW, we're going to sure. bring you back. 855 450 freeze the toll free number. You can join us here on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and 
installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to join us here toll free and bring up anything that you want. Though right now, most people want to talk about the police and how out of control things are with police abuse which is now leading to people being out of control in the streets in Baltimore, destroying things that don't have anything to do with the police, including innocent people's cars and storefront windows. Looting apparently has been happening as well. Not sure how bad it's going on tonight, but last night was apparently pretty bad in Baltimore. You can share your thoughts here toll-free. It's all about the death, uh, at least right now, the, the, the catalyst for what's happening in Baltimore is the death of Freddie Gray, who, by all indicators, wasn't doing anything wrong. He ran from the police, had a switchblade on him, but otherwise hadn't been accused of doing anything. There wasn't a warrant out for his arrest. They just came after him because he ran. And then he mysteriously showed up with a spinal injury that led to his death several days later while in police custody. Uh, an injury that purportedly he did not have before he had gotten into police custody. The police are saying that they didn't engage in any kind of violent conduct with him. But there's no video camera in the police van in which he was being transported. They know the van stopped twice on its way to whatever holding facility they were taking him to. And uh, he had that spinal injury when all was said and done there. The toll-free number here tonight. There's more about the story from TheAtlantic.com I'd like to get to. But we're uh, going to your calls and thoughts as well. We've got A.W. listening in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, A.W., you barely had a chance to get a thought out there before we went to the break. So go ahead. Well, no, I was just, like I said, I was sitting with a friend of mine here from Montana and tell him about how it's like to be raised in L.A. And, you know, that the riots that happened in L.A., you know, that was where, the, the, I think it was 64, 65, what was the riot? 69? The, the, the first one was 69, I think. Watts? Before, but yeah. yeah, the Watts riots. Um, and they learned in the second one, in the second riots, not to destroy their own town. They came into Hollywood. They came all the way up into 
you know, suburb, not suburban, but white man's area, I guess you would say, or not the hood. But uh, it was scary. There was people on rooftops with guns pointing at these people, you know, and it was all because of, you know, Rodney King. And Rodney King, that uh, whole thing, you know, was caught on tape. And we were, I was sitting here talking with my friend. I'm like, yeah, you know, they, they did go overboard. And like Ian said, they're given a pass sometimes. You know, they're like, uh, how is this guy's life? How is these cops? They had him surrounded. How is the, how are their lives in danger? And uh, whooped this guy to, to no end and were acquitted. And, you know, I don't know if the, what the, the, you know, the circumstances, if this guy is going to be found guilty or not uh, in Baltimore uh, of doing whatever. But like you said, he ran. He ran away, and that, that so did Rodney King. And they just, the adrenaline goes, and they're on it. Well, King was, wasn't he pulled over? What was the circumstances that sta- that started uh, before the beating on King? It's been, you well, know, he was, he was, you know, he was speeding, and then he didn't stop. He didn't pull over, and then when they got to him, he was. Oh, uh, the adrenaline speed, rush. Which, yeah, he was like, you know, Superman at, at that point, you know, on, on PCP. And uh, there's, you know, these guys, uh, they gave him a good whooping. And then the city erupted because they gave those cops a pass. And I, you know, I, I would be, you know, everyone would be upset with that. There was, you know, it wasn't just blacks that were upset with that. I saw that whipping on that guy. That was, that was not, that was, I, I think if you got six guys, can, I think they can pounce on this guy and get him on the ground and whatever. And I'm hoping that the same thing didn't happen with this guy from Baltimore because, you know, if these cops get all the adrenaline, like the, your previous caller said, you know, they put a knee on his neck and the one's got a choke. Next thing you know, oops. Yeah, thanks, AW. I think you're right on there. I appreciate your call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You know, in the King case, at least you could say that they had pulled him over for something. Uh, I'm not justifying it at all. But, I mean, in this guy's case, in uh, Mr. Gray's case in Baltimore, he just went for a run when he saw the police. What's wrong with that? Well, I think that that's, I really think that that's a position that's just untenable. If is you, running, should running be illegal? No. Should running be a reason for the police to come after you? I don't think yes. it should. Running is a poli- reason for the police to come after you. If you begin running after you make, uh, just immediately after you make eye contact with the police officer. Look, I'm not saying it's a good idea to, to do that, but it shouldn't be illegal. There, that's not, to me, that's not probable cause to take somebody down and put them in handcuffs. It's a police officer's job to assess threats, to figure out who's who's doing right, who's who's cheating who, and who's being true. And the fact is, is if you begin running when you see a police officer, that makes you look darn suspicious. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, it should not. I don't care how suspicious it look, makes you look. That should not be probable cause, and I would sh- like to know if it is. Is, well, the, is that considered probable cause for what the does, police to? What is probable cause to c- catch up with somebody and talk to them? I mean, what's, this is what's not wrong with the police? O- talking what, is, what is wrong with the police officers catching up to this guy and, and talking to him? This is not what happened, Mark. They ca- they they took him to the ground and then they took him into a police van where he ended up with a deadly spinal injury yeah i think that's that, not a quick talking to i think that's not police, jogging alongside the guy and asking him some questions about where he's going and what marathon he's in police are going to be considered remiss by the vast majority of the public if they don't go chasing after people who run away when they see the, when i they disagree see the police. you've got to have a reason the problem to chase with the police doesn't somebody. have anything to do with people who run away from them the pl- problem with police in this country has to do with victimless crimes specifically the war on drugs we wouldn't be having running this conversation- from the police sir is a victim Victimless crime. There's no crime there at all. That's not even illegal to we run don't from know. the police. Is it? I, is it? I, is it illegal to actually run somewhere when an officer of the law is standing nearby? That's ridiculous to me. Are there officers of the law that uh, arrest people for being in marathons and races and things like that? How often does no, that happen? This isn't, this isn't about somebody who's running around in a matching short set with a number on their mm-hmm. chest. Ian, don't be a fool. This, that's not, not what this is about. Not everybody is in a matching This is about somebody who says, oh my God, it's the cops, and turns around and runs away. What if I did that? What if I walk up onto a police officer as I come around the corner and say, dear God, it's the pigs, and I run you away in the other direction? Said. He may not have said anything. I don't. I'm not claiming that. I'm only taking this a step further and showing you. I what would say a that's the same thing to do to to get the hell out of where a, a potential psychopath might be. Do it the next time you see them. No, I, I like I said, I understand why. I understand why people shouldn't do that because these guys are psychopaths and they'll chase you down and they will possibly kill you just for running away. 
he wasn't wanted for anything. I, I don't think it's, it's a- one thing if you're chasing down a robber. It's one thing if you're chasing down someone who just stole some lady's purse. It's one thing if you have a reason for it. But I'm sorry, just running away, that's not a reason to me. What do you think? 855-450-FREE. Bruce is in North Carolina listening to WWNC. Hey, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce going once. Speak up, Bruce. Bruce going twice. How are you doing? There you are, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Three quick points. Number one, I'm 65 years old. I've never heard of an instance where somebody runs from the police and they didn't chase him. Number two... (laughs) When this first happened, there was reports of other people in the back of that van, and now I haven't heard anything since. Hmm. And then number three, you never hear about all the innocent police, hundreds of innocent law officers that are killed in the line of duty all year. Oh, there aren't that many. Yeah, it's not. It, it's but not it's considered like five hundred at least. You're no, but you, when you say li- in the line of duty, you realize what you're talking about is mostly police hey, officers that get into automobile accidents. Shoot at you. What's that? You pull somebody over and they blow you away. That's not; those aren't the numbers we're talking no, about. No, you're here. wrong about right. that. The numbers we're talking about, think, as far as police officers killed in the line of duty, oh, has okay, a large percent. Yeah, it, yeah. Large percentage of them are ones that are killed in automobile accidents. And look, I'm not looking for anybody to be in an automobile accident. I just want to get a fair picture of how many police officers are being shot by criminals. And I think that the number is quite low, according um, to no, CNS. No, 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 it's quite high. And no, I'm not sir. Talking about- you're just pulling numbers out of your butt. Here's some actual numbers for you from oh, cnsnews.com, Bruce. You don't have any idea what the numbers are. You're I've so got them anxious. right here, Bruce. They're from, it's from cnsnews.com. That's a right-wing website. Their headline is The Right News Right Now. So if a, you know, if a right-wing website isn't going to back the cops, I don't know who is. Here you go, cnsnews.com. Uh, this is from the, let's see, December 22nd, 2014. The total number of police killed... In 2014 is 114, and of those 114, 46 were killed by gunfire. So I'm sorry, but you're just not correct. Less than half. Far less than half. The other 56 were accidental, with 26 killed in vehicle crashes, one officer who drowned, another died in a fire, two by accidental gunfire, 15 killed by heart attacks, and three who died in motorcycle accidents. That's what kills firefighters, heart attacks. Three who were struck by a vehicle, and five who died in vehicle pursuit. I heard different statistics so I, I admit that maybe we i have the wrong i'm I surprised the, the numbers are that high i really is when yeah. you're talking about it more than just a just oh, over a hundred you hear about a cop i know just in north carolina we have 10 at least a year that get shot by somebody they pulled over on a highway yeah how much of that was related to the war on drugs i wonder as well i wonder how many you i mean i wonder how many fewer dead cops you'd have uh if there was no war on drugs thank you bruce for your call tonight appreciate it and thank you, Google, for allowing me to check that information so quickly. The internet is an amazing thing. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We'll come back with more on the death of Freddie Gray. What happened there? At least what little we can find out we'll share with you here in moments. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. If you're a liberty and freedom-oriented American, come to the third annual Arizona Freedom Fest at Shots Ranch Shooting Range May 1st through May 3rd. Fun for the whole family. Lots of stuff for the kids and lots of great guest speakers and events for everyone. Food, music, shopping, and more. Speakers include Sheriff Richard Mack, Derek Grayson, Joel Skousen, and many more. Plenty of camping room at Shots Ranch. For tickets or more info, go to ArizonaFreedomFest.com. That's the third annual Arizona Freedom Fest at Shots Ranch May 1st through May 3rd. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 26, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.74 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $219. Antiwar.com reports, despite President Obama's outspoken praise for the intelligence community in the wake of revealing a pair of Western hostages were killed in January, the drone war, which has become a centerpiece of his foreign policy, is often carried out in an intense fog. There have been occasional inquiries in the past about signature strikes, the administration's policy of carrying out strikes on totally unidentified people they think might be acting in a way that a terrorist would act. All this language really means, however, and it's something that's becoming increasingly apparent is that when President Obama signs off on a strike and some CIA agent pushes a button, the U.S. often has no real idea who they're about to kill. The January hostage killings reveal this in more ways than one. As the U.S. struck what it figured was an Al-Qaeda compound, which is the official way of saying they blew up a house, they had no idea who was inside except that there might be Al-Qaeda. That's the U.S. drone war. A lot of people are killed, only a handful are ever identified at all, and when the U.S. does happen to kill some real Al-Qaeda, al-Qaeda leader, they seem as surprised as anybody because they sure didn't know they were aiming at him. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports a pair of convicted drug smugglers scheduled to be executed in Indonesia have received official notice from the government that they will face a firing squad imminently, possibly as soon as three days. Australian nationals Myanmar Sukumaran and Andrew Chan reportedly received their execution notices Saturday and were informed by their attorneys. Earlier this year, Indonesia drew international criticism when it resumed capital punishment and in response instituted a new procedure to notify the condemned at least 72 hours before they are executed. Drug trafficking is one of three crimes in Indonesia that earns the death penalty along with terrorism and murder. When given his 72-hour execution notice, Sukumaran created three new self-portrait paintings in his prison cell, one titled 72 Hours Just Started. Although there has been no official word exactly what date and time the convict's execution will occur, Australia Foreign Minister Julie Bishop said they would be scheduled imminently. She also said that her government would continue to seek clemency for the men from Indonesia's president. Indonesian officials said that while Sukumaran and Chan may be executed in three days at the earliest, the government has the option of postponing their deaths if it so chooses. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Nepal urged countries to send aid to help it cope with the aftermath of a devastating earthquake that killed nearly 1,400 people, a toll predicted to rise as rescuers used their hands to dig for survivors among the rubble on Sunday. Thousands of people braved freezing temperatures and patchy rain to sleep on pavement, in parks, or in fields in the crowded Kathmandu Valley, too afraid to return to their homes damaged by a 7.9 magnitude quake, which struck at midday on Saturday. Information and broadcast 
Broadcasting Minister Menendra Rijal said, We have launched a massive rescue and rehabilitation action plan and lots needs to be done. Our country is in a moment of crisis and we will require tremendous support and aid. Cell phone video shows climbers concerned about avalanches. Police said the death toll has reached 1,394 with about 4,700 injured. More than 630 people have been killed in the Kathmandu Valley and at least 300 more in the capital. Foreign climbers and their Nepalese guides around Mount Everest were caught by the tremors and a huge avalanche. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after having sexual intercourse with a prostitute earlier this afternoon, local man Jacob Reynolds told reporters that he never expected the experience would bring him to new heights of emotional and spiritual fulfillment. I was convinced that having sex with a complete stranger behind my wife's back would leave me feeling drained and empty on the inside, but... My self-esteem is through the roof. Reynolds, who said he paid $150 for a 30-minute block of time, said that his moderate expectations for the encounter were instantly surpassed by what turned out to be a deeply personal sexual communion that transported him to a new plane of emotional intimacy. I've never felt a stronger sense of spiritual connection. When our bodies met, there was an immediate sense of familiarity and comfort that just washed over me. I think it was the most meaningful experience of my life. This is the Onion News Network. We are back with more Free Talk Live, launching into the third hour of the live Sunday edition. That's right, we're here on a Sunday. We'll talk to you about anything you want to discuss. It doesn't have to be related to the continuing epidemic of police abuse in this country, and now the uh, bubbling over uh, into violence of the frustration about that police abuse. It's happening in Baltimore, where Freddie Gray perished in police custody. He was arrested on April 12th and died on April 19th of spinal injuries purportedly received while in police custody. He had uh, been arrested for no reason other than the fact that he was running from a cop and then ultimately ended up in the back of a police van they apparently didn't use unnecessary force with him while they were arresting him, according to some who witnessed the situation. There was also a video of the arrest itself. But at some point between the arrest and when he got back into the you know cust- the holding facility, uh, he ended up getting a deadly spine injury, and nobody's talking about why that now, happened. You and I disagreed on whether or not he should like police should chase after somebody who makes eye contact with a police officer and then begins running. Um, previously, I will say um, you you taking the stance that apparently you should just be able to uh, you know walk up say dear God it's the police and yeah, run away. Free speech. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. Whatever. Um, I mean, I think I shouldn't get taken to the ground and then crushed for speaking and then running. I, Sorry, I, that's not a crime. I don't recommend that behavior regardless of how you feel it either, about it. I don't recommend it either, but it's not a crime, is it? I, I'm not asking that question. What I'm saying I'm is... I'm asking is that, you that question. Is it a criminal act to say something, to exclaim something, and then run? I think that it is highly suspicious and going to uh, you know, get the interest of police. It will, but what because the police, they're acting like uh, attack dogs and vicious animals. But I don't think the police had any particular reason for arrest, right? Like, So you grab, they get the guy, they take him to the ground, they run his uh, information. His bet, I mean, I assume they can go, at that point, you know, they go through his pockets, they get his information, they run it, they find he has no warrants. You don't warrants. get to go through someone's pockets because they run away from you. That's an illegal search and seizure. Did they go through his pockets? I have no idea, Mark. You just said that they would be able to do that, and no, I'm, I'm letting just saying you know. They did. I'm letting you know that that is not, as I understand it, legal. I'm not an attorney, uh, but just because you've run from the cops isn't a justification to search, in my opinion. I'd, I'd love, to hear, I'd love to hear from law enforcement on this. I'd love to hear from law enforcement and attorneys on this one because I just think yeah. that you're going to get taken down. But I don't think that there's any. Particular I understand reason that. For I'm arrest. not denying that you're going to get taken down. I'm saying that that's inappropriate. I think you're going, uh, fine, Ian, I don't really care what you have to say on it. The fact is we live in this world, and this world, police are going to likely harm you severely when it happens. There are so many yeah, more crimes okay. that police officers commit in this country that are so much worse. The, mm-hmm. the, the politicians are on their side, the victimless crimes, the war on drugs, these things, 
That's an entirely different thing to me. This is a very normal behavior of somebody who's okay. set as a guardian. I suspect you'll find these kind of things happen with security guards. I would want... Uh, I suspect you find the same thing happens with a rabid dog. Let's talk to Guy in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Guy. Hi there. Hey, First guy. of all, I'd like to state that I am a 61-year-old, three-quarter white, one-quarter Native American male. Um, I have had bad experiences with police officers, especially in Albuquerque, uh, 30-odd years ago in Houston and 35 years ago in Kansas City, Kansas area. However, we must remember that each individual case must be investigated and judged on an individual basis. There can be, with the police, as with me and you, no blanket, blanket condemnation of all police. Now, we are having problems here in Albuquerque. Oh, yes, you are. These days, like we had in Houston 30, 35 years ago when I moved to Houston. Now, I would rather get arrested by the Houston Police Department because it, because it is a severe, extremely, I should say, diverse uh, police department. It represent, represents the population. Um, you've got men, women, whites, blacks, Hispanics, Orientals, everybody on the police department. Um, I would rather get arrested by them today than any place else. Quite frankly, I moved to Albuquerque 10 years ago. And by the way, I did live three years in Baltimore. Um, now, the Rodney King incident, people need to watch the entire Rodney King tape. Rodney King was a six foot five, 230 to 250 pound male who threw 200 pound police officers off of him when they were trying to cuff him like they were 25-pound babies because he was all drugged up. I believe they said on PCP. Um, so, you know, we've, we, we know that in Ferguson and in Florida now, I don't think that justifies, before you seems like you're going on to another point there, uh, I don't think that justifies the sadic, sadistic, vicious beating that those police officers commenced against Rodney King. You don't know about the sadistic beating is that actually it was not sadistic. Uh, I worked as a campus policeman for three years, and I was trained in the use of batons. The What most people interpret as a sadistic beating, or what you are, is actually beating, uh, pounding people with the batons to the legs to create pain, but very little actual physical damage to try to get them to be subdued. Keep in mind, once again... I'm watching the Rodney the King video right here, and I don't see Rodney... The very first part of it, as you suggest, Rodney King is not picking up police officers and throwing them around. The first part of the video, yeah, which I am watching again, is uh, Rodney King yeah. being beaten with sticks. Yeah. Oh, but it's only on the legs where it's totally okay They're to beat beating him. him on the back. Yeah, you're full of it, guy. Well, Thanks for the call. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I'm glad I you have beat me no to that, idea Mark. what happened in this Rodney King situation. That's why I went to look. It's been yep. a long time. But there's no the video of which he's speaking here, it says Rodney King beating video full length footage screener um, is the uh, the title on YouTube. And I don't see Rodney King picking up police and tossing them <laughs> around like rag dolls. Yeah, I'm glad you find you got to that before I did because I was actually searching for it as you apparently had already done so and started watching it. So thank you for that. Let's go to Jeff in Elgin, Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Jeff. Hi, you guys. Hey. Um, so I was working late, and um, it was I'd get off at midnight, and I went to this grocery store. So the cop was behind me in line, and I just looked at him in the eyes, and he went nuts. Like, you know how if you look at a dog in the eyes, they go nuts? And he ran out to get in his car and waited for me to come out. And then when I went by, he followed me down the road like I was driving slow because I knew he was behind me. I was going like 30 miles an hour. So he's... You know, I mean, this stuff is unnecessary. There, there's actually other things that they could be doing, and um, that's one kind of a situation. Um, another way, that's so it's the it's the thing like with the dog. If you look at him in the eye, you know, they have the same 
kind of a thing going on. And then also, if if you swim away from a shark, if the shark thinks it's food, you know, and that's that's their other thing, you know, if you run away from them. They, it's a predator. They, you know, they, uh, it, it, it's a chase instinct. Yeah. And um, another thing is if the cops ever try to knock on your house or whatever and they want to come in, don't let them in. Just yes. like in the movies, if you let the vampires in, you know, then they do it. They create havoc. Yeah, it's true. Nothing good in. comes from letting the police into your home. I agree, Jeff. But thanks for sharing your thoughts thanks tonight. Toll free number 855-450-FREE. Nathan's in Texas via Skype. Hello, Nathan. Strangely, the Wikipedia article says that King kept trying to rise and then kept being beaten down. So I don't remember if the video shows that or not. But it does. Uh, it does show him trying to get up. But I mean, usually he could be trying to get away from people who are hitting with sticks. Yeah. And by the way, in the video, I, I also pulled up a copy of it here. Uh, in Gates the video, looked at the tape. Oops. And... <laughs> Apparently, there's an audio track to it too. Uh, hang on a second, there, uh, Nathan, because you're both on the same uh, audio feed here. So in this video, you've got basically two cops who are commencing with the uh, with the beating. There are at least four other officers just standing by watching. If this guy was such a threat, all of those officers would have been on him and holding him in you know a position that would prevent him from being able to harm any of those officers. So the fact that there's just four guys standing there watching that guy get beat probably laughing about it at the time, uh, suggests to me that King was not considered to be much of a threat at all. But we'll bring you back here in a moment, Nathan, for further comments. This is Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free to join us here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Protests continue in Baltimore. They've been going on since April 19th, basically, when one man perished in police so-called custody. Freddie Gray, he died after ostensibly receiving some kind of a deadly spinal wound, some uh, destruction to his spine that resulted in his dying for about five, four or five days later. The doc said it looked like an automobile accident. That's how serious it was. And yet police are saying they didn't use any uh, force or excessive force well, with this man. touch him. Uh, there's no video of the time between when he was loaded into the police van and when he ultimately was unloaded from that police van. So who knows what happened to him. Uh, but we'll continue with, there's a little more to the story from the Atlantic.com where they're sort of summarizing what little we do know uh, about this situation. Also, uh, people are upset. They're, they've taken to the streets, protests in Baltimore. Of course, most protesters are peaceful, but there are always the element, or at least in this case, there was the element of folks who were down there simply to destroy and indiscriminately destroy, not just destroy police cars or the police uh, lobby or you know the city hall, but to destroy innocent people, to destroy or innocent people's property, innocent people's cars, uh, innocent people's storefront windows. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. And I want to let you know that if you've been thinking about getting gold and silver, what are you waiting for? Silver's down. I mean, remember when silver was like 40 bucks, Mark? It's now down to, what, $16, $17 an ounce or something like that? I'd have that? to check. I remember when the silver was at 50 Yeah, so I think it like peaked at 50 and then started dropping. So now might be a good time to get some silver over at silver.freetalklive.com. It's a great alternative to the Federal Reserve notes that you probably already have a bunch of, you can turn those into silver and gold and protect yourself against inflation. Historically, gold and silver have been excellent hedges against inflation. So maybe that's your motivation for getting it. For me, that was my motivation for getting silver. Kitco's uh, got silver right now at 1576. Wow. Uh, or perhaps, you know, you want it as a barter currency or an investment. Either way. You go to Midas Resources through our link at silver.freetalklive.com. And Free Talk Live benefits when you buy silver that way and gold. Silver.freetalklive.com or call them up toll free at 877-857-9938 for Midas Resources, silver and gold, and some other stuff too. I think they got some unusual precious metals there as well. 877-857-9938 or silver.freetalklive.com. We're back with Nathan. He's in Texas via Skype. Go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, these these protests are uh, you know they're not surprising in a sense. The the reputation of police, uh, like Mark has been saying, seems to be going down. I remember I was watching Better Call Saul, and I was just stunned by how negatively police were portrayed. I mean, you know, you go back fifty years, look at the Andy Griffith show, you know, or whatever. That's a good <laughs> you, point. I mean, well, if they tried to remake that, do you think people would call it unrealistic? Yeah, I would expect so, yeah. We read on air a few weeks ago um, statistics about just sort of, uh, I think it was Pew Research, I might, might be wrong on that, um, what sort of the uh, the thought processes of people, um, what their confidence level was in police from 1981 till now, and they've been falling in all racial segments but mm. uh, for blacks they've been falling precipitously i think it went from 79% of blacks in 1981 had confidence in the police 
And this is the beginning of the drug war, right? This is uh, well, this is when crack comes on the scene. Okay. Um, and the drug war technically started during Nixon, but yeah, I get where you're. Where yeah, you're well, it, it started in earnest in 19, yeah. 1981, um, and it, it dropped. In, at this point, I believe it's lower than thirty percent confidence. Of, yeah, okay. the confidence level um, with uh, this black. Th- this includes blacks of all ages, right? Like so. Many times you're yeah. thinking of sort of middle-aged blacks saying, well, you know, the young people, they're, you know, whatever. Nah, they don't have a lot of confidence either. Nathan? Yeah, and uh, it seems to me that protesting is, it doesn't seem like an effective solution because it's like praying to the, to the state, sort of. It's like you're saying, please stop doing this. And there doesn't really seem to be any incentive on their part to do anything about it. Um, you know, I suggested during the uh, Eric Garner, or I'm sorry, um, uh, what was the other one? Michael Brown? Uh, Michael Brown, yeah. Uh, I, su- I remember suggesting on, I think it was Coplock or something, that maybe the people should just stop paying taxes, you know, like go on some kind of tax revolt or something. It's a great say, idea, well, but that actually takes, you know, personal risk, and the average person isn't willing to have the police target them over this. They're okay with you know holding a sign and chanting. I'd in say a in this case, protests and even riots put pressure on police and the government to change. Um, I'm not saying I'm expecting to have full accountability from police uh, agencies in the next year or for governments to suddenly act right or anything like that. But I'm what I'm seeing is pressure, and I, th- you know, essentially what a police department has to ask itself the next time we have some unarmed black man that's shot for no particularly good reason is well, are we ready for the city to get set on fire oh, do we want to pl- protect these police officers because it didn't happen in, in North Charleston South Carolina there weren't any riots there that's because the police they went had after the video. that cop yeah the police had the video they went after that cop you didn't see a bunch of riots instead if that uh, video had gotten leaked and the police hadn't done anything, you could very well have seen the, yeah, a Ferguson all over again. And that's why I think that things are going to change. The pressure is now there. Well, I, 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 I think I kind of am in between both of you. Like, I tend to agree generally that protests don't seem to do anything. Generally, I, I agree. That, but I think that Mark's right. But when you right, have enough people. Yeah, I think that Mark's right. I mean, the city, city council uh, and the police... They don't want the city building to be destroyed, right? And there were thousands of people outside of the uh, Baltimore Capitol, or not Capitol, but the City Hall. Uh, So there were thousands of people protesting there yesterday. And it didn't go to the point where it did, I don't know if you remember, in Oakland, California, during the Occupy protests, where the occupiers in Oakland actually went inside City Hall and proceeded to destroy it. Uh, they don't. They don't really want that to happen because that would destroy some of their legitimacy. So I think Mark's right that some some pressure is on because of these protests, whether they are violent or not. I don't support violence, but but uh, the protests are definitely putting pressure on the government. And I don't think that's a bad thing. But at the same time, I can also understand how someone could attend one of these protests thinking that they're going to see some sort of palpable change happen quickly as a result, and then be disappointed when nothing ultimately seems. To happen in an obvious manner. I mean, I don't think having one protest is going to result in a dramatic change to policy, but I do think it does mount some level of pressure that may result in some accountability, maybe. Let me ask you. Maybe maybe in the future, what we're going to see is just increasingly violent riots and increasing amounts of them offering up individual officers to the wolves. That um, really uh, that really brings up something for me, because in many cases, we we advocate on Free Talk Live, we advocate for uh, peaceful solutions to societal problems. Mm-hmm. However, I would say that many times when peaceful solutions have been uh, proffered, I'm thinking Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr., there were violent elements with going on at the same time. I mean, Black Panthers are going on at the same time right. Mar- MLK is going on. Uh, with Gandhi, there was, you know, there were riots happening violent riots so uh, at that point all it did was give sort of uh, social credence to the non-violent revolters but in this case is the violence that's going on the senseless destruction of property is that going to be what puts pressure on police departments to i change? don't think so i think that's going to give the police more of an excuse to be violent thanks nathan for your call and thoughts Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. The live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live continues in moments. 
Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99, and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, Cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at Cato.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Sources within the Vatican confirmed Tuesday that Pope Benedict XVI has dispatched an elite team of six bishops to sabotage leading contraceptive manufacturer Pfizer. Codenamed Conclave 6, the highly trained team of bishops will reportedly infiltrate the heavily guarded compound, detonate extremely powerful charges at key points within the factory, and then escape to a nearby safe house. The Catholic Church can trust only the best with defending God's plan. Conclave 6 is the deadliest team of bishops I've ever laid out. On. The Pope denied rumors that a B-team of needle-wielding priests had been deployed to a latex factory in New Jersey to poke tiny holes into thousands of Durex condoms. Locally, the best part of a gay 12-year-old's day is the half hour he spends eating lunch alone in a stairwell. Calling it his only respite from constant ridicule and mockery, 7th grader Ben McElroy says life doesn't get better than the moments he spends quietly laying out his lunch on a secluded staircase while the rest of his classmates are in the cafeteria. This is the Onion News Network. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype at Skype username, lrn.fm. It's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live continuing here. I also want to remind you about our website and all the great features that we have there, uh, including the webcam over at cam.freetalklive.com. You can watch the show as it happens. Or if you want to watch later on, you can always visit our YouTube channel at youtube.freetalklive.com because we take the cam feed and then upload that later on to the YouTube channel. So all of those, so we've 
I don't know. It seems like we've been doing that like for almost a year now at this point, the, the YouTube channel. So there should be quite a few shows there on our YouTube channel if you'd like to uh, see them. You can do that. Of course, we've got MP3 archives galore that go back for coming up on a decade for free. All of it is over there at freetalklive.com. So please enjoy the website as we continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got John listening in New York in Auburn. Hey, John, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, uh, you're on. Are uh, you listening to uh, Finger Lakes News Radio? Go ahead, sir. Well, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Go ahead with your thoughts, John. All right. Listen, I'm a I'm a I'm an autistic uh, father. I have a child with autism. Okay. I'm an author of a national best-selling book, The Autistic Holocaust. I have a severe neurological disorder. I just did the walk for autism. I'm I'm a book author seller. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I've listened to you guys for the last three years. You're freaking awesome. Oh, I'm thanks. behind you 100% on what you do. I, uh, I listen, I sit here, and my head is spinning. I'm, I'm a prophet. I am a, a pastor ordained by God. And I got a message, and it's like, you don't got to believe in God. I don't care. I know Mark or Scott, whoever, doesn't believe in God. It don't um, matter. Actually, we're both ministers in the Shire Free Church. Yeah, I'm not sure Scott and is. And one of you guys went to prison. I went to prison. I spent five years in fucking jail. Oh, Boom. we can't have you, you saying those things on the radio. Right. So sorry about that. Uh, the toll-free number. I understand jail's frustrating, uh, but uh, you can't say the F word on the radio. So I wish we didn't have to get rid of him because I was curious as to what he was going to say. So maybe you could call him. He had a message night. from God. You Well, you know. Okay. Anyway, he could uh, call any other night of the week and try that again without saying the F-bomb, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'd will we love to hear from him. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. The, I do appreciate the passion. Yeah, the, the, the getting drop thing is kind of like the penalty box here on Free Talk Live. Um, so if you drop uh, you know, one of several words, uh, one of them begins with F, one of them begins with S, uh, there's a couple with a C, uh, GD is not uh, exactly appreciated. Uh, you know, As well as A-hole. Yeah, a hole's not gonna go anywhere. No. Um, yeah, if you can't edit yourself uh, to that level, I mean, it's, it's not very many words. Then you get to sit in the penalty box for an evening, and then you can call back. It's not yep. that big of a deal. Look, we know what it's like. It's not like we haven't cussed on air before. Yeah, um, we we get I've it. Done it. Um, I've actually, you know, you've done it more than once. I've done it more Bad than boy. once. Yeah, uh, I think you've done it more than once. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Let's I go think to early, Robert. In the early days, it seems like Robert, you're in Bellows Falls in Vermont. Hello, Robert. Hey guys, hey. I uh, was uh, uh, I had the opportunity to watch a, a live stream of what was going on in Baltimore last night for about probably about three hours. Okay, and it was just absolutely insane. A lot of the things that the people were doing, and you know, I, I'm thinking that one way that could this could be solved is doing exactly what. You know, a lot of people in the Free State Project are doing. They're running for these elected positions, you know, like like city council or mayor, or, or running for sheriff, or 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 running, you know, in the, the political offices, you know. Or, or I mean, take a look at what's going on in, in Grafton, New Hampshire. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. I think that's a lot. Uh, that's but that would, that would definitely make a big difference. You know, I mean, at least that's what yeah. I'm thinking. I, uh, we are having uh, liberty activists who are running for local office uh, here in New Hampshire. There's people running for state rep that have won. Uh, the people who run for local office don't get as large of a touting publicly when they do that. But I know for a fact some free staters have been elected to school board here in New Hampshire. I know of at least two. I think a lot of them don't want to uh, necessarily be known as free staters when they run. Yeah, that's probably true as well. So it is happening, Robert, and more will be coming here uh, over time. Of course, for those that don't know, the Free State Project is a movement of 20,000 people that we're at over 16,000 right now. We want to reach 20,000 who've signed to pledge their lives to move to come to New Hampshire and to get active uh, here and to be uh, to be active for more liberty in our lifetime, and it's a big it's a big commitment, and uh, and I'm proud that we've already gotten over sixteen thousand. We'll probably be hitting twenty thousand sometime in twenty seventeen if current rates of signups keep up, and then once the twenty thousand number is hit, there will be a five year window of time in which all twenty thousand have to move here. We've got over seventeen hundred who are here now and who are getting active in various different ways, and some of them in the ways that you've suggested. Robert, anything else you want to share tonight? Yeah, let's hope and, uh, uh, that maybe some of the people in Baltimore that let's hope 
hope that they're listening to the show and and then they'll get the idea of, of uh, you know what we're about and and you know, we might be able to make a difference. Thanks. Have a good evening. Thanks, Robert. You too. Uh, thank you for the call. Toll free number tonight eight fifty five four fifty free. I'm going to pick up the story here at theatlantic.com talking about uh, the gentleman who was ostensibly killed by the police, but nobody really knows what happened to Freddie Gray after the police arrested him on uh, April 12th. He died on the 19th, and he apparently had some serious spinal injury that had happened to him while he was in police custody. Now, the lack of clear evidence in Baltimore, according to TheAtlantic.com, is a reminder of how unusual the case of Walter Scott was. The North Charleston, South Carolina man was shot in the back by a police officer while running away, but a bystander caught the incident on video, which debunked the official police account in a police report. Officer Michael Slager has now been charged with murder. And as colleague Robinson Meyer wrote, society owes much to the brave bystanders who tape encounters like this, and their footage has gone a long way to helping achieve justice and to awakening the public to police brutality. The obvious tie between the Gray and Scott cases, though, is that in both incidents, police apprehended black men under questionable circumstances. Scott was for a busted taillight. Gray was for, well, it's unclear. In both cases, the black community feels its members were unfairly targeted by the local police. Uh, quote, I'm not saying Fred was an angel. Whatever he did is now in the past, but the police already have made up their minds about who we are, Rudolph Jackson told the Baltimore Sun. Quote, they figure every black person with their pants hanging down is a suspect, and they stop them without probable cause, unquote. That echoes complaints of uh, blacks around the nation, from Ferguson to Staten Island to Cleveland, about yeah. how they experience the police not as benevolent defenders of the peace, but as an arbitrary menace, more likely to violate a citizen's rights than to preserve them. I'm no fan of people walking around with their pants down around their butt, uh, as anybody who watches the Facebook page for any length of time will figure out um, at facebook.freetalklive.com. But I don't think that that should be a reason by any stretch of the imagination to go after anybody. I mean, you know, an article of clothing doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. Six officers have been suspended with pay and placed on desk duty in the Gray case. And while the Baltimore police didn't specify their race, the three officers in the clip arresting Gray all appear to be white. One thing that separates this case from, say, Ferguson or North Charleston is the demographics of those in power. It's true that whites are overrepresented in the Baltimore Police Department compared to the city's overall population, but black and white officers make up roughly equal portions of the force. In addition, uh, both mayor— yeah. So in a city that is largely black, um, there is it's 50-50 white and black. Yeah, there's quite a few blacks on the police, unlike Ferguson where it was almost all white yeah. on the police department there. Conflicts between the police and black citizens are often discussed as though the question is whether officers profess personal racism, a trap that even FBI Director James Comey in an otherwise sympathetic and thoughtful speech on race and law enforcement fell into. Troubled relationships like the one between Baltimore's black community and its police force, despite the presence of elected and appointed black leaders, show how racism is a systemic problem. It is the way people behave rather than whether they manifest any personal animus. The issue is how the justice system as a whole treats black men. The other obvious problem here is what happens when police not only aren't being filmed, but aren't even being watched. Despite movement to provide police with body cameras, many still don't wear them. There's much that's still unknown about Gray's fatal injuries, but it's hard to avoid the conclusion, based purely on what the mayor and others have said, that his injuries came at the hands of police officers in the van. Uh, Rodriguez says at a news conference, quote, he did suffer a very tragic injury to his spinal cord, which resulted in his death. What we don't know and what we need to get to is how that injury occurred. More coming up. When we needed $5,000 for a medical emergency, a friend told us about Avant. They use their own risk evaluation software to calculate a personalized interest rate, one that works for us. The whole process took minutes and didn't affect our credit score. We've helped over 100,000 Americans get the money they need fast. And with Avant, you'll never pay hidden fees or be penalized for paying off your loan early. Right now, Avant will also give you a $50 Amazon.com gift card after your first installment is made on time. To check your rates risk-free and get this special offer, go to AvantOffer.com today and enter promo code 200 at checkout. That's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. Again, that's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. 
Loans are made by WebBank and by affiliates of Avant Incorporated. California loans offered by Avant will be made under financial lender's license number 603K124. Amazon is not a sponsor of this promotion. Other restrictions apply. See website for details. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoin. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bid.co. Bidbit.co. Bidbit.co. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Hey, we're back with more Free Talk Live. In these remaining moments, we have enough time for you. You dial in right now. 855 450 free is the number. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype. Skype on in. You'll sound great, usually. Unless your <laughs> internet connection sucks or your mic is awful. But generally, I would say 90% of the time, Skype sounds better than a phone. So use Skype to connect with us at username lrn.fm. You just need to send a contact request, it will be approved. And after that, easy to call us on Skype from that point forward. Also, something else that's easy to do is to contribute to the African Satellite Fundraiser going on right now over at africa.lrn.fm. It's, uh, you know, a variety of different perks are available there. There's you know, stuff as cheap as five bucks. If you've only got a buck, whatever. We'll take whatever you can contribute because it all adds up and it makes a difference. It'll help us get our show and all the other great shows on lrn.fm back on satellite over most of Africa, you can see the signal pattern. You can watch a four-minute video all about it, why it's so important to reach out to the, to the folks in Africa with the message of liberty. 
Uh, this is a place where people don't have a lot of access to information. In, in fact, uh, lots of people in Africa don't have any Internet access whatsoever. So what's called free-to-air satellite is a lifeline of information to these folks. And we can bring the ideas of liberty there for uh, about $22,000 for three years, looking to raise that with your help. So please go to africa.lrn.fm as we continue with your calls and thoughts. Uh, we've got Bruce. He's in Albuquerque. Bruce, are you listening on Kiva? Yeah, 1600. Excellent, sir. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. All right, man. <clears throat> Everybody's got an iPhone now. Or something like that. recording everything. Everything. And, and the cops down here, that apparently some of their iPhones went south. Okay? I got some bullet points. I think that the federal government infiltrated APD. To see and gauge public outrage among the people after outrageous shootings, these police are transplants. They will take care of you later. Are you I'm suggesting that the violence on the uh, Albuquerque Police Department, the recent incidents of like a homeless man being murdered, I know I've heard about that one, there have been some other things. Are you suggesting that those are actually federal agents who are doing that? Maybe. It sounds like a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Is there any evidence for that? Well, no, I don't have anything to back it up. Okay. However, it's just a theory. There's, there's, there's been some uh, police shootings in the back, and there's been a hell of a lot of payout on civil court cases. Civil court cases against the uh, department? They, they, they settle out of, out of court. The yeah. department has been settling, or the city and, and uh, the police department have settled? Yeah, a bunch, like hmm. millions. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's yeah, all being dude. footed by the taxpayers of the city of Albuquerque. So, of course, the officers themselves, the higher-ups, the brass, they don't have any financial responsibility for any of this. Yeah, it doesn't sound like uh, the—I I don't, I don't hear anything in the, those accusations that sound like the feds might be involved necessarily. It doesn't make sense as to why the feds would, uh, you know, take the time and effort to infiltrate the uh, the Albuquerque well, police. They might, they might come down here because of this weird town, right? It's a lot of brains, a lot of Hispanics, a lot of white people, a lot of uh, Native Americans, you know, a lot of culture. And they just go, just go in there, man. Plug a couple of people, and then let's see what's good. let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't think that doesn't really hold water with me. But thanks, Bruce, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, the toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. It's it's uh, look. I'm no fan of the federal government. Okay, I want to see secession happen, right? But at the same time, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, the policing attracts a certain type of individual. Now, there are different cops, and some of them are better than others. But the fact that they have power over people tends to attract the people who want to use that power, who want to wield that power, who are badge heavies, as uh, they've been called by a police trainer who used to contact the show and kind of give us the inside scoop as to what things were like in, in the, the world of training these cops. And he said that a significant portion of the people, like 90% of them, who were uh, coming into the police academy that he was training at were not good quality recruits. Like, he considered these to be bad people, people who were getting into it for the wrong reasons, people who wanted to wield power and violence over innocent people. And uh, This is why he quit being yeah. a police trainer. Right. And he said it had gotten worse over the—I think he'd done it for at least 15 years at the time that we knew him, and that was— God, probably seven years ago since we've seen Jeff. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he he quit out of frustration because he just kept getting these crap can level uh, recruits, and he didn't want to do it anymore. But I don't imagine that situation has changed or gotten better. So you've got these people coming in who are badge heavies, as he described them. These are people who want to hurt other people and get away with it. They're the equivalent of the people who join the military because they know they can murder people and, you know, that it's legal. Well, I don't know if a badge heavy is necessarily somebody who wants to hurt other people. What they are is somebody who thinks that the badge makes them more important. A police officer, in my opinion, uh, a good police officer, is somebody who can use... Uh, you know, uses every tool in their uh, available to 
them to de-escalate a situation, to create a safer and more peaceful neighborhood uh, where the things around them are safer, that uh, they're not just trying to take the bad guy in at all costs, because you don't know who the bad guys are and who the good guys are, especially if you've been doing the job for a while. It tends to, it all tends to run together. Can you give me your definition of badge heavy again, Mark? A badge heavy, uh, to me, is somebody who thinks that the badge makes them more important. No, you're wrong about that. Uh, here's from the police's own website, policemag.com. This was a uh, definition presumably written by one of their supporters. Badge heavy. Usually a new guy who's on a power trip, stopping, arresting, or threatening everyone in sight. They usually grow out of this behavior, claims the person who wrote that. <laughs> well, thank God. You'd think that they usually get fired would be the thing that I would like to hear. But that's a, that's cop slang for other cops, right? So they came up with that uh, that name. And so, yeah, it is about uh, abuse of power. It is about wielding power over others. Let's go to Rod. He's in Des Moines. Rod, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello. Hey, yeah. Um, I've been in law enforcement for 35 years. Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hey, guys, I've been in law enforcement for 35 years. I understand. I've seen some good ones. I've seen some bad ones. I'm still in it. Um, I just I really have a hard, real hard time when people pass judgment on the law enforcement community in general for one or two officers that do something shouldn't have done. But at the same time, put yourself in that position when an officer has to make that decision on a split second. Everybody else gets months and weeks and years yeah armchair quarterback this they certainly do realize but I don't think we're making a jump. I don't think uh, that we're making a jump a decision after uh, one or two police officers. One of my big concerns is is that a lot of the videos I see of uh, you know things that I consider to be abuse of power on the part of the police have to do with lots of police officers being around. We just talked about the Rodney King incident, and there's police officers standing around while other po police officers beat the guy. Right. Somebody should have probably stepped in and said, "Hey, whoa, 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 back." That's what I think, yes. Yeah, they should have. But but there again, on the Rodney King thing, we go back to that. The media only played what they wanted to meet people to see. There was more to it that actually led up to that. And then what about the event after it was all settled? Rodney King got millions of dollars for getting beat up, which I, I'm not going to – I wasn't there. But then was there a big story made about Rodney King trying to run over a police officer after that? I don't recall. A year or two later? Yeah, he tried to run a cop over out there. Well, Nothing that's not okay. That. Obviously, that's not no, okay. Not. But uh, you know, there's there's people who are definitely wrong on the the side of the police on that one. Look, there's uh, there have been a few instances where a cop has stepped in and stopped a fellow officer from continuing some sort of savage beating. And in some of those instances, the officer who steps in ends up getting getting punished or retaliated against, fired, uh, blackballed. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, these things happen. Yeah, so, I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't, I don't work in a big department, you know, in a, in a huge, huge department where, like, a metro area where, you know, like uh, Boston and Ferguson, Missouri, you know. It, but these people that are doing what they're doing, to, if you want to protest, that's great. Have peaceful protest, say your piece. But what they're doing and, you know, targeting law enforcement officers, those law enforcement officers are getting targeted with absolutely nothing deserve which targeted law enforcement officers are we talking about i'm sorry I, I need a little help with who's being targeted the rioters in, in boston they're targeting in the police baltimore officers on the front line or baltimore i'm sorry yeah yeah. They're they're actually more going after uh, random crap more so than uh, than they're yelling at officers. police too. There's no doubt about it. But um, let's, let's go back to Ferguson, Missouri. But we can't. Un <laughs> I wish we had time for it, Rod. But if you call in earlier, uh, let's say tomorrow night earlier in the show, I'd love to continue the discussion with you at that time. Uh, I mean, the protesters are out of control too, right? Like I don't yeah. I don't appreciate what they're doing exactly. either. This is this is what's naturally going to happen. Uh, there's been too many killings of police of uh, police officers killing civilians who are unarmed, and this, the pressure's got to come down. Call us again, Rod. We'll talk more. Thanks for the call tonight. We'll see you at freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. 
The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. 